الزنا لا يحرم لو واحد زنى بامرأة وحملت منه يقول لك إن هذا الماء غير محرم يعني إيه غير محرم يعني دي مش بنته يعني إيه برضه مش فاهم يا عم الشيخ يعني هل يجوز له نكاحها قال لك أيه جوزها عادي دي بنته قال لك مين اللي قال بنته هي لا بنته لا شرعا ولا شيء ما مش بنته لن تنسب له أصلا ولما واحد يزني بواحدة ويخلف منها بنت فكتب باسمه باسم الزاني لا أبدا أبدا يبقى مش بنته يعني قتل المرتد مو عشان يصير مسلم المرتد مرتكب لجرم مثل الزاني الزاني اذا كان محصنا يرجم اذا كان غير محصن يجلد السارق اذا اجتمعت شروط قطع اليد قطعت يده القاتل يقتل فهذه عقوبات هذه عقوبات لهؤلاء العمل الذي قاموا به ومنها المرتد اذا ارتد يقتل اذا تاب من الرده يترك لكن هو يعاقب على هذا الفعل ان فيه استهتار بهذا الدين فيعاقب على هذا العمل كما لو سب الرسول او سب الله جل وعلا او كذا فانه يقتل لهذا الفعل وليس لاجل ان نغصبه على الاسلام الاسلام يعني لا يحتاج ولا يريد يعني مرتزقه يعني يصير مسلم ولا ذبح ناكل لكن لا لا ما نريد مرتزقة الكف... أول شيء السبي لا يكون إلا الكفار لا يجوز سبي مؤمن يعني لا يجوز يكون قتال بين مسلمين مثلا لأي سبب من الأسباب الفتن التي تحدث يكون قتال بين المسلمين لا يجوز السبي أبدا السبي لا يكون إلا الكافر لا يسبى المسلم أبدا وإنما يسبى الكافر وأنا أرجو أن الإنسان لا يخجل من دينه و يقول لا هذا قبل والإسلام لا يدعو إلى هذا لا كن, كن قويا في دينك أظهر دينك نعم هذا ديني نعم الذي لا يرضى أن يعبد الله تبارك وتعالى فإنه يستعبد أو يدفع الجزية أو يدخل في الإسلام أو يقاتل هذه الأحوال الأربعة أبدا لا يوجد حال خامس أول ما يدعى الإنسان يدعى الإسلام يقول أعبد أعبد الله تبارك وتعالى الله خلقك لتعبده فإذا قال لا أريد أن أعبد الله تبارك نقول تعيش في أرض الله ولا تعبده ادفع الجزية يقول ولن أدفع الجزية فإذا رفض أن يعبد الله ورفض أن يدفع الجزية نقول له إذا ما لنا معك إلا القتال فنقاتله لأجل هذا فإن قتلناه فهو في النار وإن أسرناه فهو من السبيل يصير عبدا رغما عنه لما رفض أن يكون عبدا مكرما باختياره فسيكون عبدا حقيرا بدون اختياره هكذا هو الأمر بالنسبة للذين لا يعبدون الله تبارك وهؤلاء يعني لا تشفقوا عليهم هؤلاء كفار هؤلاء يرفضون أن يعبدوا الله تبارك وتعالى يرفضون أمر الله جل وعلا يعادون الله يسبون الله جل وعلا فالإنسان لا تأخذه الشفقة على أعداء الله على ناس هم معتدون And you have no idea how much I hope Allah is going to curse you to the rest of your life Nothing boy, you're finished already, look at me Look at me, you know you're done You are Ali 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 Wallahi Every single land Every single country Wallahi with all their governments and all their military force and all their might and all their science and all their money and all their know-how all with the exception of none every country every tree every grain of sand every mountain every river 
Every ocean, every ocean, wallahi, every star, every sun, every moon, every single planet, every single angel, the billions and billions and billions of angels, all of them, with the exception of none, Mikael, Jibrail, Israfil, all the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven, the fourth heaven, the fifth heaven, the sixth heaven, the seventh heaven, the ocean above it, the eight that carry the flame of Allah, the, do the, water. the hearts of Allah, all are dead, all are dead. Ali. Ali. Hello my friends, my family in Christ. Hello to the Muslims. We don't hate you, we actually love you. This is why we are doing this. Freedom! We are live on air after one long week. Freedom! Braveheart, if you've seen the movie Braveheart, yeah. YouTube, Sharia YouTube, YouTube Sharia wanted us to be silent. But you know, when Muslims try to flag our videos, we will come back harder than ever, dude. Do the water, man! And today, uh, guys, today is about, uh, you know who, right? You know who? It's Muhammad Golden Showers Hijab, that guy, yes. I mean, if you've seen yesterday's live show with the Apostate Prophet and our dear brother in Christ, the amazing Christian apologist, Dr. David Wood, and um, Hamid Hijab was sitting in the live chat requesting golden showers. So from now on, guys, from now on, it's Muhammad golden showers hijab. Pure comedy yesterday. I, 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 you know, sometimes you think you have seen it all, guys. You have seen it all. But then this guy comes and shows us that we didn't see everything and what has been seen on the internet cannot be unseen yes so Muhammad Hijab you made a fool out of yourself you actually are helping us you are helping our cause to show everybody what kind of nasty disgusting evil man-made religion Islam is because you are showing us the true fruits of Islam and we know the fruits of Muhammad the wannabe fake prophet Muhammad and I mean, if you are a follower of uh, a prophet like Muhammad, then we understand why you're saying such nasty things. Request is such nasty things. Guys, for the people who do not know what golden showers are, go ask prophet Google peace be upon him. All right. Welcome everybody. God bless you. Let me say hi to our friends. Let me start with the admin. Stippy Bear, how are you dear sister? Debit Rai, God bless you. Debit Rai, Salam al Masih. Salam wa ni'ma. Peace of Christ to all of you. Renfer, uh, let's see how, of, if there are other admins. Dear brother Renfer, keep our admins in your prayers, guys. iPhone 3G, TM Cross Pulse. Is Phil Herrera here? I'm not sure if there are more admins. If they are going to show up, we'll see about it. Uh, guys, make sure to always check. Uh, the live chat afterwards, after we are done teaching, uh, after we're done our live show, our admins always provide the sources that we are showing also on the screen. And you can also find it if you replay the live chat, you can find the sources there too. We'll always try to post the links there. Oh, Redmouth already giving me a super chat. Thank you, Redmouth. God bless you. God bless you, loved ones. Thank you. God bless you, brother, says Redmouth. Thank you so much. God bless you too. Also, let me say hi to Message of Love. She has an amazing life. Uh, sorry, YouTube channel, Message of Love. Don't forget to subscribe to her. She, you know, I, I love her uh, thumbnails. She always designs amazing thumbnails. So, you know, she uploads our videos, other Christian warriors, their uh, videos, their YouTube videos. So make sure to subscribe to all the people who are supporting us, download our videos. The scammers, Abdul, how are you, my friend? God bless you. Salam and Masih. Keep all the Christian countries in your prayers, including Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, uh, everywhere. Every Christian country there is, especially the ones who are, where the Christians are being heavenly, heavenly persecuted. All the countries, Indonesia, everywhere. 
Keep all our brothers and sisters in your prayers, guys. Let me also say hi to Christ is Lord, Bra1, uh, Red Admiral, Cheeseburger. How are you, my friend? Bruno for Christ, Raya E, uh, Yemeni Falcon, Yemeni Falcon. Uh, stop calling us liars, man. Yeah, stop calling us liars, man. Shame on you. Till the day you could not show us where we are lying. Hello, Tiger J7. Sean Guide, how are you, my friend? Sean Guide, God bless you, brother. Alika, ZFTP, Cherokee, Gypsy, uh, Jason Alberno. You have more names than uh, your Allah, man. Allah looks like a tiny idol compared to you with your many nicknames. Uh, Arthur Line, uh, Hayden Tang, Last Jedi. Wow, there are many people already. Lolo Mimi, Toga Richard. Archangel of Christ, free world, freedom! Yeah, finally I'm released, man. Sharia I, to finally release me from my bondage. But, you know, the more you Muslims try to silence us, the more we will come back harder to spank you, spank your prophet, spank your heroes like uh, Muhammad. Golden Showers Hijab, that's his nickname from now on, guys. Muhammad Golden Showers Hijab, that's his new Nickname, Golden Showers. And you will understand why if you didn't catch what happened yesterday. Um, let us start with a nice prayer, guys. You know me, we always try to start with a nice prayer. Uh, make sure to subscribe to your YouTube channel, guys, if you didn't already. Smash that like button, destroy it like it's possessed by jinn, how Muhammad was possessed by jinn. Destroy it uh, if you can. Help us out on Facebook. You can subscribe to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the Rob Christian. And you can also support our ministry on patreon.com slash Rob Christian. I want to also give a shout out, a huge shout out to our dear brother, David Wood, Mr. Dr. David Wood. He actually uh, became a patron for two months on my YouTube channel. So. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. David Wood. I appreciate it. You're an amazing brother in Christ. So, let us start with a nice prayer. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, the name above all names. Pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus, please bless our beloved audience and subscribers who are always here to support our ministry who always pray for us, pray for my family, guys. Lord, thank you for your grace. Jesus, we truly believe that you are risen. al Masih Qam, you are risen indeed. al Masih Qam, Haqqan Qam. That's what we Arabic-speaking Christians say. al Masih Qam, Haqqan Qam. Truly you are risen. Lord, thank you for my newborn baby boy. Thank you for this lovely gift. Please keep my wife and baby boy healthy and safe, Lord Jesus. Protect them and bless them, Father, in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. And bless everybody who is here now and listening and watching to our very live stream right here, right now. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from eternal damnation, from eternal death. And thank you for this amazing, lovely audience and subscribers who are always here to support us day in, day out at least once a week, if we have the chance to go live. Please bless them and their loved ones and families. Please, Lord Jesus, protect us and keep us all healthy and safe, especially from the spread of this coronavirus. Yes, the coronavirus, highly contagious virus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our word, thoughts, and actions. Please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into any discouragement, taqiyya, tawriya, deception, makr, any lies or any doubt, Lord. Please help us on you in all our ways. Lord, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us. Please, Lord Jesus, including the Muslims who might be in need of the truth, who are seekers of truth, Lord. Please also open their eyes. So show yourself to them so they can also be saved. We know that many Muslims see you in their dreams and leave Islam, drop Muhammad, 
like the garbage he is and come back home to you, O Lord Jesus. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and loosen my tongue today and guide me so I can speak the truth, nothing but the truth, without any error or any shame, Lord. Please, Lord, give me wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Welcome everybody, we are live on air. Yes, you heard it correctly, we are live on air. On this very live show, we'll have the opportunity today together, guys. I know it has been a long time because Sharia Tube decided to uh, silence me for a week because um, Muslim cowards, the Muslim bankrupt idiots who cannot silence us by the truth, they can only flag our videos. So YouTube, you know, decided to silence us for a week, but we, we are here, we're not afraid. We will not be silenced. Freedom! <laughs> so guys, on this live show today, we're going to show you the filth of this Sunni Muslim apologist, i.e. Mimi, the golden showers boy, hijab. So let us expose this disgusting, evil, nasty individual who yesterday was requesting for golden showers. For the people who do not know what golden showers are, Ask Prophet Google, peace be upon him. He's a much better prophet than Muhammad. We'll see if we're going to open up Skype, guys, because I have a couple of videos that I want to play for you. I want to say hello. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being here. God bless you. We just started, actually, for the people who just joined. You didn't miss much. Tell the people that we are live, guys. Invite the people on social media. Tell them that we are back. All right, we have at least six dislikes. That means we have Muslims who are here to witness what happened, uh, f for example, yesterday. And we're going to go through some Muslim Islamic sources to see why individuals like Muhammad, the golden showers boy, hijab, says nasty stuff like uh, what happened yesterday, right? So welcome. Welcome guys. I hope that all the admins are here. I'm not sure if uh, I miss any admin. Keep all the admins in your prayers guys. They are always here to do amazing job, to uh, post links, to post uh, our social media. Hello Revelation 2213, how are you my friend? Guys also subscribe to Revelation 2213. He has also an amazing YouTube channel. Subscribe to all the Christian Apologist YouTube channels, guys. Message of love, I already uh, mentioned you, sister. God bless you too. Guys, welcome. Let us start. Let me play a YouTube video first. And uh, we will go from there. All right. So let us, with a small introduction, play a video from this Mimi Hijab, this Muhammad, the golden showers boy, hijab. Let us play one of his videos and we will go from there. What did I say? The Quran claims. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Mr. Hijab was ready for this, so he proceeded to smash my mistranslation. He says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi and he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between Yusalli Lahu and Yusalli Ala in the Arabic language. I knew what does it mean? Happen. What does Yusalli Ala mean? Please teach him Arabic, man. Teach David Wood Arabic lessons, please. I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I Embarrass him, please. Embarrass him, man. That's why the translators put four. Not to the prophet. Four, not two. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic. Allah mean, prays four, not two. You heard him, right? Come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. According to Mr. Hijab, what did I say? And he's here saying that he prays to the prophet. What did I actually say multiple times? Surely Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. What's the correct translation? And that's why the translators put four, not to the Prophet. Muhammad Hijab, what an embarrassing career-ending statement. 
Mr. Mohammed Hijab, I advise you to never ever again debate in your life. Your career has ended, my friend. Don't debate with people like David Wood. Don't ever debate on Speaker's Corner in London because your career is over. To make it even more worse, guys, this guy even lied about the Arabic because it does not say for according to the Arabic because the Quran says the following Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala an nabi again ala an nabi that means on the prophet not for and not to if Muhammad Hijab claims to be an expert as an Arab speaker he clearly embarrassed himself more than that it's not for it's not to it's on the prophet i don't uh, blame david wood for not knowing arabic but this mr hijab guy he's an egyptian he should not have used taqiyya and a basically he's agreeing with david wood on the for the prophet part it's not to it's not for it's on the prophet so not did he bust himself and his fake prophet he busted himself on in the english and he busted himself on the arabic so let us go to the quran to prove to you that four and two are both wrong so if we go to quran chapter 33 ayah 56 we can read the following inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala an nabi yusalluna pray on the prophet it does not mean to Allah means on the prophet it does not mean for the prophet it means on the prophet did you catch it guys Allah and Nabi Allah and Nabi Allah and Nabi it means pray on it does not mean for it does not mean to it's on the prophet guys we should not blame dr david wood our dear brother in christ he's not an arabic speaker but when you are going to go on a stage and you in front of millions of audience right because everything is going to be recorded and everything is going to go online on youtube for example when you're going to claim to be an expert and you're going to claim to teach Mr. Dr. David Wood Arabic lessons, free Arabic lessons, Mr. Uh, Mimi Golden Showers Boy Hijab, at least be consistent and don't make a mistake if you're going to teach someone Arabic. It's Allah, you said it, it's Allah Nabi. It means on the Prophet, but still Allah is doing Salah, Allah and his angels, you saluna, you saluna, you see it, you saluna. I understand that when we pray, when I when I, I want to pray, Mr. Mimi Hijab, Mr. Golden Showers boy, I pray to my Creator. I pray to my Creator. I pray to God because He created me. I worship Him. I pray to Him. But when Allah prays, to who Allah prays? Hello? No comment. No comment. Allah still prays. Allah still prays. To who Allah prays? Allah Allah knows best. So guys, when Mimi Hijab, after that debate, you know, when he started to feel the heat after we done response videos, immediately after the, the, the debate, and we played the video already to show you how we can spank him easily. He is claiming to be an Arabic expert and is going to teach Dr. David Wood Arabic lessons. At least be consistent. So he came back after that debate. He went to Africa, to Ghana to be specific. He came back from Africa and he said, no, no. You know, when he was uh, questioned by uh, Sister Hatun in uh, London, in that park in London, in Speaker's Corner, when she questioned him about uh, this part, Allah prays for, not to, 
He said, no, 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 you, you need to, you didn't hear it correctly. I meant to say, Allah praises the Prophet. No, you said Allah prays for, not to. So he's lying, he lied, and he tried to do damage control by playing word games, right? Playing word games. So after that hot debate, he, he tried to correct himself. He said, I made a mistake. Allah praises the Prophet. But wait, chapter 1 of the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Fatiha, Ayah 2 says, Alhamdulillah. All praises to Allah. So are you saying that Allah is worshipping Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad Hijab? Are you saying that your creator, your moon idol Allah is doing hamd? Allah is doing hamd for the Prophet? You are making it even worse for Allah, man. You are showing everybody that Allah is the slave of Muhammad. Muhammad is the real God of Allah. The real God of Islam is Muhammad. Thank you very much. Guys, give this guy an, 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 an applause. Please, give him an applause for showing us that Muhammad is the real God in Islam. Allah is his sock puppet, his slave. Allah is the real God in Islam. Even Allah is praising the Prophet. Uh -huh. Speaking from cave, Hira, Hira, Hira. This is why Muhammad took that divine title, the praised one. Muhammad, guys, means the praised one. The name Muhammad, I almost knocked my microphone from uh, the desk. <laughs> Muhammad, guys, the name Muhammad means the praised one. So when Muhammad took that divine title, Muhammad became even more higher than Allah. And you're show, you know, Muhammad Hijab is showing the evidence. Alhamdu li Muhammad. Right? That's what you're saying, right? Muhammad Hijab. Alhamdu li Muhammad. So we should ask Al Azhar, guys. We should ask Al Azhar in Egypt, the same ones who dropped their old Qurans in the Nile River. And when they wrote the 1924 version of the Quran, that is the number one used Quran today, we should ask the same people to change. Ayah 2 from Al-Fatiha, change it to Alhamdu li Muhammad because Muhammad Hijab said so. Right? Muhammad Hijab said Alhamdu li Muhammad. So all praise is to Muhammad. Uh oh. Ya miskin, ya Muhammad Hijab. Instead of fixing, instead of doing damage control, you made it even more worse for your prophet. Uh, Yemeni Falcon. Ya, ya miskin, enta huwa al miskin, ya miskin. You are such a coward, you don't even dare to call me to defend your busted golden showers boy, Muhammad Hijab. Why are you so scared, man? Give me your Skype ID. Stop crying, puppy. So, According to Muhammad Hijab, the real God in Islam is the Prophet Muhammad, not Allah. Because if Allah is going to do hamd, which means praising the Prophet, that, then that means Allah became the slave. Allah is doing shirk for the sake of Muhammad. Abam! Any Muslim? Let me open Skype for the Muslims, guys. Only Muslims can call us for now. Right? You see, my Skype is open. Only the Muslims can call us. No Christians for now, guys. All right? No Christians for now. Christians cannot call. You heard it, right, guys? Admin, make sure to write it in the live chat. Only Muslims can call us. So if you have the courage and the knowledge Muslims to call me, my Skype is open. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Again, the Rob Christian. Call me if you have any guts. If you think you have the courage, call me, Muslims. All right, call me. So this guy became a mushrik. He made Allah a mushrik for the sake of Muhammad. Because Allah, when Allah is going to do hamd to Muhammad, praising, hamd, hamd, praising, then Allah became a mushrik who is doing hamd to Muhammad according to Muhammad Hijab. That's what he said. That's what he said, right? And you know, this idiot here, this golden shower boy, he single-handedly 
destroy the career of Yasser Qadi. Yasser Qadi, because of this idiot here, who is helping us, basically, he single-handedly destroyed the career of Yasser Qadi. Right? With the, there is a hole in the standard narrative, brother. Holes in the standard narrative, brother? Yes, brother. So he single-handedly destroyed the career of Yasser Qadi, Dr. Yasser Qadi. And both of them, these two idiots, these two cowards, to hide the evidence, they both removed that very interesting video. Yes, both of them removed that video. He, in the original video, he took 30 minutes out, you know, to hide what was said during that interview with Yasser Qadi. Right? Remember, you've seen it. Don't say you didn't see the video, right? You've seen it. And, you know, to hide what, uh, the evidence to, you know, to remove more, any more damage than they already done, they both decided to remove their videos from their YouTube channels. What a bankrupt religion. If you need to hide the evidence, guys. Deleting the video so that people cannot see it anymore. To, to <laughs> not cause any more confusion then already there is already enough confusion. Right? Enough holes in the standard narrative, right? I mean, uh, you Christians, uh, the one who made this, you know, uh, some, some, someone sent me this picture. Ya Sarqadi Shabir Ali, Adnan Rashid, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa is nurse, Zekar Naik, a brother Fitha, and the Prophet himself, Muhammad. The Prophet of Islam. The standard narrative, brother, has holes in it. That's what Yasser Qadi said. The standard narrative has holes in it. Right? The standard narrative has holes in it. Why are we calling this idiot here the golden showers? Well, because yesterday, actually a couple hours ago, yesterday night, this guy was sitting in the live chat of the apostate prophet and Dr. David Wood requesting golden showers. I kid you not. Go, go, go open the live chat and you'll see him requesting golden showers. I mean, you will we'll show you evidence for that. I made screenshots, right? So, I mean, as if you didn't see enough, right? I mean, we understand that Muslims love to drink urine and whatnot. The Sahaba used to drink urine, not only camel urine, but also the Karen, the urine of the Prophet of Islam himself. Uh, what about muta, muta, and whatnot? Here, here's the, the the hadith about the muta. Sahih al Bukhari narrated Abdullah. We used to participate in holy battles, holy battles, holy, led by Allah's messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is praying on him. Sallah. Salah, right? Sallah, the verb. Allah is praying on him. And we had nothing, no wives with us. So we said, shall we get ourselves castrated, O Prophet? Then Muhammad, he forbade us that and then allowed us to do nikah with the women. Temporary nikah with women. With a temporary contract. So, it, you know, to have had sex. For a temporary time, let's say a maximum of three days, and recited to us, O oh, you believe, make not unlawful the good things which Allah has made lawful for you, but commit no transgression. So Allah, the pimp Allah, Allah being used, right? Remember, Muslims always use Allah as the sock puppet of Muhammad, right? There's nothing called Allah, it's Muhammad always, fabricating ayahs. And this is chapter 5 of the Quran, ayah 87. So, Mut'a, which is nothing but prostitution, became halal, brother. Allah, the pimp Allah, allowing Muslims in the time of Muhammad to do prostitution, which we call mut'a, mut'a. Let us see what this mut'a is. Mut'a, yes, mut'a. Al-nikah al muwaqqat Al nikah al muqat, right? Temporary nikah, and they call it marriage. There's nothing called marriage. It's sex, sexual intercourse, right? Nikah. You know what nikah means, right? Back in the old days, it meant sex, temporary sexual intercourse. And if we continue reading, 
In some works, a special term is applied to women to understand what this muta is, guys. What muta is? Who participate in muta? Remember muta, right? Mustajara. So you are hiring women, rented women. Do you see it? You are allowed to rent a woman, you know, as if you are renting a car or a bicycle or a bike. You are renting women for sex. Muta'a is considered a kind of rental. Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira, Allah allowing as a pimp, Allah the pimp, 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 allowing Muslim men with big, long beards, 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 to rent women, women, to hop, please hop in the back. Let us do some... Uh, <clears throat> Speaking from Kif, Hira, let us rent a woman, brother, brother, brother. Sexual, this is kind of marriage for sexual enjoyment of a woman. I mean, you see, women in Islam, guys, women in Islam, in the time of Muhammad, were nothing but sexual objects. F them for a couple of days, and, and uh, you can end the contract, and that's it. You go your way, I go my way. You see the, the level uh, of the Muslim women, guys? And these are Muslim women, man. These are your daughters and sisters, man. Muslims. These are your daughters and sisters that Muslim men with long beards could rent as they can rent today. As you go to a, you know, to a rental service, you rent a woman. I mean a bike or a, or a car. <laughs> Allah the pimp allowing women to be rented for sexual enjoyment, brother. Sexual enjoyment. That's the muta. I mean, we heard it all. Golden showers, muta. Lick each other's fingers, said the Prophet. Maybe there's a ber beraka, you know, uh, a present hidden somewhere in your food. Make sure to lick each other's fingers and whatnot. I mean, as if we, we, we seen and heard it all. Then this guy, this idiot, he comes along and requesting golden showers. Golden showers. So guys, let us play another video. Let us play another video. Try not to laugh. Try not to laugh, guys. What can we do? This is Islam. Let me play this video and uh, let us enjoy what Muslim apologists like Mimi, the golden shower boy hijab, is saying. He says that, this is exactly his words, he said the Qur'an is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says, the Qur'an is... Idiot, idiot, your prophet said it. Watch. <laughs> your prophet said it, that the Qur'an is an eternal person. Watch. Uh, it, it, you have to, it will come as a shafi'ah on the day of judgment. So if, idiot. This is the question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Qur'an is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question. This is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. This what is the, the only good question say? you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al-Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. Iqra al-Qur'an. So he's rejecting what an authentic hadith is saying. So it's not that the Qur'an, i.e. the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Qur'an and the thawab that you get of the Qur'an, which means the... You are a liar and a deceiver and you just called your prophet a liar, a deceiver, a fake prophet. Yes, you heard correctly. This idiot here on the screen just called his own prophet an idiot, a liar, a deceiver and a fake prophet. Mr. Muhammad Hijab, if you have more than 200,000 subscribers, if they are sincere subscribers and they are watching today's live show, they are here, they are watching, they are going to unsubscribe and they are going to go to your house, grab you by your beard, drag you over the floor and clean your floor, the floor with your disgusting beard. Because you just called your own prophet a liar, an idiot and a deceiver. Just 
just make sure guys let us go a little bit back Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment but it is your qira'a of the Quran and the thawab that you get of the Quran which so according guys according to Muhammad Hijab the reading of the Quran will intercede for you not the Quran itself you heard it right again the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Quran and the thawab that you get of the Quran, which means the reward you get from the recitation of the Quran, not the Quran as an attribute of Allah. Yeah. You heard it right? Not the Quran itself will intercede for you. That's what he said. Is that true, guys? Refutation number. Two. Let, let me refute him. If we go to. Thing went wrong. Give me one. I just got a disconnection. Yeah. Refresh guys, please refresh. Admins, tell the, our audience to refresh, please. Yeah, we are live on air, so things can happen. Refresh, please. <laughs> we are middle of a live stream, but you know, we are on, on YouTube. And when you are doing a live show, all kind of things can happen. Let us see, guys. Okay. Are we back? We are back. Okay, thank you for the confirmation, guys. People refresh, refresh, okay. Let us continue. Let us refute this idiot here. If we go to sunnah.com, we can read the following. I heard the messenger of Allah saying, read the Quran for it will come as an intercessor for its reciters on the day of resurrection. So you can just read with me that the Quran will come as an intercessor. This is from the mouth of Muhammad himself, the Prophet of Islam. This is Sahih Muslim book 9, hadith number 1. If we go to a different... Did you catch it guys? Did you catch how he just called his own Prophet an idiot? Mr. Muhammad, golden shower boy, golden showers boy, hijab. When you call your own Prophet an idiot, are you out of Islam? Why are Muslims not carefully Listen to what you what you said during that hot debate between David Wood and yourself. Why are they not doing some investigation? Go to the hadith, recheck if you are lying or not. Because guys, imagine, imagine you are live on air, you're doing a, 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 a debate and millions and mis millions of people are watching. Why Muslims are clapping like the sheep they are, bunch of idiots. They are not doing investigation of this guy is lying or not about their prophet. You see how Muslims one day clap? They are clapping without any clue. This guy is single-handedly attacking Muhammad and he claims to be a Salafi Sunni Muslim. Guys, are you still with me? Are you understanding what is happening here? Hadith. We can read the following. Different hadith. Recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Do you, did you catch it? The Quran itself will come as an intercessor. What did this guy say? No, that's a lie. He called David Wood a liar claiming that the Quran itself will not come. Guys, he said the Quran will not come as an intercessor. Sir. But... The qira, the, the recitation itself will intercede. That's what Mimi Hijab said. Right? That's what Mimi Hijab said. So he called his own prophet a liar. Muhammad is the one talking, right? Recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Did you catch it? The Quran itself, not the Qira, not the reading of the Quran. You just called your own prophet a liar, Mr. Muhammad Hijab. Let me go back. Let us see what he said, just to confirm. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. Your prophet said it. You, you, you see guys how he just called his own prophet an idiot? Did you catch it? And his eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says, the Quran is, uh, it, 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 you have to, it will come as a Shafi'a on the Day he of Judgment. So if, this is the liar. question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Quran is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question, this is a good question. But it's not 
a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, really? the only good question you had. I'll give it liar? to you. This is the only good question you had. You just called your own the, prophet The liar. hadith says, Iqra al-Quran. So it's not that the Quran, i.e. the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment. Did you catch it? So not the Quran will intercede. You just called your prophet a liar for a second time. Recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection it will come as an intercessor. You evil son of Satan. Why are you lying? Why are you calling your own prophet a liar? Because remember it's Muhammad talking. Did you see how this idiot who claims to be a Muslim apologist calling his own prophet a liar, a deceiver, a fake prophet. That's what he's doing. And the sheep, the sheep, the Muslims, the Muhammadans, who are his fans, who are his subscribers, are eating this slide, this deception, like breakfast. Imagine this guy has more than 200,000 subscribers. Wow! Wow! What a liar, man! <laughs> he just called his own prophet an idiot, a liar, a fake prophet. Mr. Muhammad Hijab, you are out of Islam. Congratulations. <laughs> Guys, give Muhammad Hijab, the golden shower boy, give him a rose. Please, man. At least he deserves a rose for helping us, for making my job much easier. And proving for, to everybody that Muhammad Hijab is not a Muslim anymore. He just became a Murtad, lying about his prophet, calling his prophet an idiot, a liar, and a deceiver. Let it sink in, Muslims. If you are a sincere Muslim, Muslims, listen carefully. If you are a sincere Muslim, you would go to Muhammad Hijab, at least unsubscribe from his YouTube page, or if you are a not a coward, go to his house or go to Speaker's Corner, grab him by that beard of his, drag him over the floor, clean the floor with his beard of Speaker's Corner and make him repent, force him to repent or else Aslim Teslim. Aslim Teslim Ya Muhammad Hijab. You just called Muhammad, our prophet, a liar and a deceiver. You are out of his... You are out of Islam. So do you see how these Muslims, their audience, they didn't come for the truth. They came for a show. Debating Muslims face to face is nothing but a show. And you ask us to debate these people face to face? You see? It's much easier to show the evidence on the screen. This is Sahih Muslim again, 804A. Sahih Muslim 804a. Great Another Hassan. one. Sunnah bin Majah. Hadith number 3781. Hadith. Sunnah the bin Quran Majah. will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. Mr. Hijab, you, are, have, you have been refuted for the second time. The this Quran. Is a Korean... The Quran will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. This is a carrying ending, man. Thank you that you have debated with David Wood, showing us that you are nothing but a fake Muslim. Wow, it's over. It's game over, Muhammad Hijab. Yesterday you were panicking, you were on the live chat, you were on the live show of the apostate prophet together with David Wood, and you were calling for golden showers. I understand why, because you, 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 you know, you are, you know, you, your, your career has been ended. This is why you stopped debating smart Christian apologists, because you know it's over for you. You know it's over for you. Thank you, uh, Aaron Staley, my dear friend and brother in Christ. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, Aaron Staley says, welcome back, Rob. You were missed. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I missed you too. I missed all of you. God bless you guys. You see, we are here. We are here for the truth, nothing but the truth. And false prophets, idiots and liars, golden shower boys will be spanked. They will be barbecued and served for everybody to see. So if you are a sincere Muslim, be honest with yourself. Why are you still a subscriber? Why are you a fan of this liar and deceiver, Mimi Hijab? What did he say? What did he say? The Quran is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This Your is a prophet lie. said it. 
He says, uncreated. The, the Quran, Quran is uncreated. Is, uh, it, it, you have to, it will come as a Shafi'a on the day of judgment. So if Shafi'a this is the question, Shafi'a. I'll put it better for you, I'll help you. Yeah. If the Quran is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question. This is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. Guys, he's going to teach Islam. He's going to, de to teach David Wood Islam, right? He's going to teach David Wood Islam. But he himself is not a real Muslim. He's calling his prophet a liar and a deceiver. He's calling Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, a liar and deceiver. Look at his suit. Right? Look at his suit and his beard. He's, he's at least following the sunnah. But at the same time, he does not know the hadith. And he's trying to teach Dr. David Wood Islam. But he's failing miserably, calling his prophet a liar. Who is going to intercede Mr. Mimi Hijab? You had. I'll give it to you. This is the only good question you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al-Quran. So it's not that the Qur'an, i.e. the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the Day of Judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Qur'an and the thawab that you get of the Qur'an. Which means You are a liar, you have been spanked, you have been refuted, and you have been barbecued for everybody to see. You are a liar, you just called your own prophet a liar. The Qur'an itself will come on the Day of Resurrection like a pale man. So why, Mr. Muhammad Hijab, why are you trying to teach people Islam, but while you yourself, you don't know the Sunnah, you don't know the Hadith. You're not even a real Muslim, you're calling your own prophet a liar. And we showed you a couple of Hadiths, right? Recite the Quran for the, for on the day of the resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. The Quran itself will come for Shafa. The Quran itself will intercede. You, he said, no, the Quran will not intercede, but the recitation will intercede for you. The recitation of the Qur'an, which is a lie. It's the Qur'an itself will come as an intercessor. It will come as a pale man. Do you see it? Sayyid Muslim 804a and the other hadith from Sunan Ibn Majah 3781. The Qur'an will come on the day of resurrection like a pale man. So the Qur'an will become a pale man. Did you catch it? And it will intercede for you as Muslims. So you are out of Islam, Mr. Golden Shower Boy. You have been spanked. You have been refuted. Shame on you, Mr. Mimi Hijab. You're a liar. You are a deceiver, Mr. Golden Shower Boy. You are a liar. You are a deceiver. You just became again for how many times? I lost count. You became a murtad. You became a hypocrite. You're out of Islam. Muslims can now force you to repent. Or else, Aslim, Teslim. For the people who are asking uh, what is happening, it's from your side. Here it says it's good, all right? Here it says it's good. It's from your side. Make sure to refresh. Admins, tell our people to refresh. It's not from my side this time, all right? Let us uh, also read the super chat. Uh, thank you, Mr. First Collation 117. Thank you for the super chat. They lie every time, refer to Allah as he, when she have a clitoris. Why they don't use she for Allah? Challenge for Muslims. Well, that's a good question. Maybe we should ask uh, the teacher, Mimi Hijab, to teach us that. God bless you too, Capello Adriel. Welcome. God bless you. People who just joined, God bless you. Today is the spanking again of the Muhammad, the golden showers boy, Hijab. Now, guys, why are we calling him Golden Showers? Why? For the people who do not know, here's why. Let me play the video why we are calling Muhammad Hijab the Golden Showers boy from now on. That's his middle name from now on, guys. Here is why. Guys, pay attention what happened yesterday. Let me play the video. A part of the video. On this very live show yesterday, just a couple hours ago, here's what happened. And we talk, we're talking about the most disgusting stuff in the world, and it's and, yeah, and, and it's a legitimate and, discussion about Islam. Yeah, and, and the reason <laughs> is, I mean, that that's what the Muslim sources are about. I mean, you could you could you could pull a volume of the Hadith off the wall and open it up to a random page, and it's either going to be about slaughtering the unbelievers in the name of Allah, mm -hmm. or Aisha scraping the semen off Muhammad's clothes, or Muhammad having sex with nine women and girls in one night, and then only taking one bath. It's going to be about something like that, right? And that's why, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you study Islam, then, gosh, that's what you're dealing with. And if you want to examine the Muslim sources, that's 
that's just what you're dealing with. You know, sometimes sometimes something overcomes me, and I think uh, maybe I feel a little bit bad for this guy called Mohammed Hijab right now. And Mohammed Hijab maybe came here tonight and genuinely thought <laughs> because he was because he was so provoked by my mockery of him and by people calling him a coward, he really came here onto this live chat to, and to to think you know to, to vent a little bit and to think that he's doing something great, to think that he's coming here to humiliate us. And all he has done, no matter how you look at it, look at it from whatever perspective you want to look at it, but all he has done is just to completely embarrass himself and Islam. He has done nobody any favors tonight. He's been completely disgusting. He's been completely stupid, idiotic, and he has given us so much material to talk about something so so so, that, so good. Can, can you imagine that though? Can you even imagine Muhammad Hijab coming onto a live stream and completely embarrassing himself <laughs> <laughs> and his religion? The answer is oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> we can okay. imagine. If you're bankrupt vu, and, and hey, you know you're hey, finished, you, you remember this? Uh, guys, we did, know, did, we you know. see, did you see that interview? We can imagine. You had Muhammad Hijab, so, confu so confused. And we've seen the Hijab clips. We've seen the Hijab clips where he's uh, going to scholars who are telling him, no, the differences in the Quran are just accents. They're just different accents, right? And uh, so he gets, he finally gets Sheikh Yasser Qadi talking about this. And man, Yasser Qadi can can set this record straight because all these Christians and atheists are saying that there are these different Qurans in different parts of the world and that uh, different Muslims in different areas have different versions of the Quran. But finally, the great Yasser Qadi will, <laughs> will correct this. And then it's one epic train wreck, the entire thing, just completely destroying the foundations of Islam. And then Hijab tries to salvage it at the end. He said, but, you know, if I gave you a blank Mus'haf, you could you could put together the Quran, right? Yasser got it. Nope, nope, no. <laughs> could not be done. <laughs> Cannot happen. Sorry. End of end of end of Yasser Qadi's career. All thanks to hey, I don't know if you I don't know if you saw this, but it wasn't just a job. It was also Farid responds. Did you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I've only I've only watched one for read response video. I think I think I've only watched one for read response video, ever. But uh, someone sent me a link to a Muslim who's blasting for read for being the one who initially leaked. Who initially leaked? Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the comments of of Yasser Qadi. And so, guys, think about this situation. You have Yasser Qadi. You have Yasser Qadi. That that it was respected around the world was respected around the world as a muslim scholar right and then but behind the scenes behind the scenes he's saying i have some doubts about whether the theories that muslims have the muslim scholars have about the ahruf and kirat i don't think that these can actually stand up to critical scrutiny mm -hmm. without us just being you know just agreeing with them because we're Muslims, right? If we were to actually subject them to critical scrutiny, according to our own sources, our theories cannot stand up to scrutiny, and I'm, I'm concerned about that. And then they start, and then Farid, ah, I'm exposing this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he shares the emails. And then because this becomes an issue, Muhammad Hijab is dumb enough to think that Yasser Qadi is going to come in there and fix all this and say, oh, no, let me explain what this really is. Of course, the Quran's been perfectly preserved right down to the letter. I only meant that, you know, I'm concerned about different accents, right? He thinks he's going to say something like that and completely destroys it. And so, guys, th this goes back to what I said much earlier here. These young, aggressive Muslims who do not, who, who, who lack the maturity of their older counterparts who've been through this for many, many years, the, when these guys get big followings, they, they'll they'll destroy their religion. They they will they not be able say. to handle. It. See, see, they I got say. a big following. I have a big following online. I got that after doing some of the most horrible things a person has ever done, spending years in jails and prisons. So, so by the time I get a big following, I'm pretty convinced <laughs> that I was one of the most horrible people who's ever walked the planet. Mm -hmm. And yet I'm given a second chance. So that comes with a degree of wisdom thinking, hey, I have a bunch of followers. That's not because of how, how great I am.
because I've seen how how screwed up I am. So don't do not take this sort of stuff for granted, right? Whereas these young guys coming in, all of a sudden they're getting, you know, whatever it is, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of of fans and views, and they're already arrogant and they're already uh, narcissists and so on. And then their religion amplifies it. It tells them to be aggressive. It tells them to be like this, and then they get this crowd cheering them on. These guys will annihilate all the foundations of their religion single-handedly. We can sit back and watch. We can retire, AP. We can retire, sit yep, back, yep. and watch these guys annihilate their religion. But it, 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 it might be, on the other hand, it might be good for us to keep provoking them because that uh, that does make them, you know, go on go I on mean, these sprees. I mean, Farid is one of those young people who made a who who started his YouTube channel just without the sole aim of refuting my videos. That's what he started out with. He created the YouTube channel. He he said it very clearly. He said that he only started this because he wanted to refute me and my videos because my 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 channel was getting too popular and he couldn't handle it and nobody else was doing it he, and he even went out after he was done after he made 50 videos about me of which i watched like 10 or so i don't know he went out and said uh, i'm sorry everybody unfortunately uh, apostate prophet has grown too much and i i was too late he made such a video such a stream he says i'm very sorry i apologize i did i did my i did the best i can and the best he could do was bring such stupid arguments like saying uh well people didn't witness the moon splitting in two because people were asleep at night and it was the seventh century <laughs> which i want to make a video about very soon so th th these young <clears throat> muslim apologists are really they're not they're not doing islam any favor they're doing us big favors the other guy daniel hikikachu comes here and says uh, i don't know if you have seen that he said something like uh something along the lines of i asked him do you think is slavery good do you think slavery is morally ac acceptable and he said yes yes i don't think slavery is morally wrong and i said i asked him to explain he explained it like for for 10 minutes and you know what what it came down to what it broke down to he said <laughs> he said slavery is essentially the same as capitalism as employment but it is actually better than employment because think about it he said think about it you have a, if, if you get a car uh, buying a car is better than renting a car because if you rent a car then uh, it is not yours and you don't take very good care of it but i agree if you, but or, if you buy a or car or a toaster or a toaster <laughs> right it's like buying a toaster. Yeah, buy like a toaster. Or if, if you buy a toaster, then you take then you take very good care of it. If you if you rent it, then you don't take care of it. Which, by the way, says a lot about his morality. I take much better care of something that I that I rent than about something that I that I own because I respect <clears throat> the person who actually owns this thing, whom I whom I have to return this stuff to. So that says a lot about Daniel Kikachu, actually. But his logic was: it's better to own a car than to rent a car because you will treat the car better. And capitalism means own, means renting a person, while slavery means owning a person. If you own the person rather than rather than rent the person, then you will take better care of the person, which means slavery is better fundamentally. That is <laughs> that is the argument. And here is Mohammed Hijab talking about golden showers. So this is <laughs> this is really what's going on. Did you catch it, guys? Mohammed Hijab requesting golden showers on the live chat on this very live chat of uh, the apostate prophet the ex-muslim who became actually one of the worst enemies on internet mr the apostate prophet mr Ridwan, on this very live show with david Wood yesterday muhammad hijab as you see on the screen requesting golden showers you know what you know what i what i find fantastic um we'll we'll probably sit down in the future and say hey david do you remember that one night where Muhammad Hijab was spamming the, the comment section. Oh yeah, this is classic. This is fun. <laughs> this is a this is a fun. This is good comic relief, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is a story for the future. This is a story for for speaking presentations, right? This is yeah. this is all right. Here's my PowerPoint presentation on the true spirit of Islam, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Golden check out these shot. comments. This comes from a, from one of the most popular Muslim apologists in the world. <laughs> David, do you um, remember that night where Muhammad Hijab was telling us to give each other a golden shower? <laughs> wow, oh my God. Muhammad, Muhammad, <laughs> the Prophet Muhammad, what he produced, man. Yeah. Um, uh, quick comment right here. The Wawi, the Wawi, if you're you're still listening, the Wawi said, uh, "I want to have a respectable discussion. Don't call me coward. I'm a man of respect." He's responding to someone else. Apparently, someone called him a coward or something like this. Uh, the Wawi, I'm assuming you're the same person who uh, sent me an email earlier. Um, just do something, do something for me. All right, guys, you've seen it, huh? What can, what is seen cannot be unseen. Yeah, that's the correct way to say it. What is seen on the internet cannot be unseen. Truly, truly, you must be an idiot, an idiot to not know 
the consequences, right, uh, Mr. Muhammad Hijab? You must be an idiot to not know the consequences, right? Muhammad Hijab, and I quote, David Wood can give you a golden shower. Muslims, are these your heroes in 2020 who are defending Islam for you? Are these the people that you put your trust and you respect to stay in the front lines to defend your awesome religion of truth, Deen al haq These are the people who are representing Islam. Well, they are doing us a lot of favor. They are doing our jobs for us. Please continue doing what you're doing, Mr. Muhammad. Golden shower hijab. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, give this guy, give Mr. Mimi golden shower hijab roses. Give, them ro give him roses, guys, in the live chat. Give him roses for doing our job. He is helping us, man. Give him congratulations. Give him an applause. Give him a rose, guys. Muslims, you must be proud. I mean, Muhammad Hijab, your prophet must be proud about you. And Zakanaik, who is the master of Muhammad Hijab, he's certainly proud about his student. Right, uh, Zakanaik? A brother, sister. A big, huge shout out, brother, for uh, Mimi Hijab for giving us a good dawah for the Christians, brother. Golden showers, anybody, brother? Brother, speaking from a cave, Hira, brother. Golden showers, brother. Any Muslim, brother? Anyway, guys, sorry, I can I cannot do the voice of Zakanai as good as Christian Prince, but I'm trying. I'm trying. So, guys, guys. I understand that uh, Mimi Hijab is asking for people to <clears throat> pee on each other. He's asking for golden showers. Let us see where Muhammad Hijab, the golden shower boy, got it from. Imam Suyuti narrates an authentic report in his Al Qasas Al Kubra. Okay, Qasas Al Kubra. Guys, it's not in Arabic, so I need to guess what it means here in English. Al Qasais Al Kubra. So basically, the the big uh, stories or something. Volume two, page two fifty three. So you you even get the reference. Published by Dar Al Kutub Al Arabi. Well, it should be Al Arabi anyway. Some other online editions have this narration. Volume two, page four four one. So here's the reference, and let us go under to read what it says. And Tabarani and Al Bayhaqi narrated with an authentic, look guys, this is authentic, chain of transmission. Sahih, brother. No doubt about it. Sahih is as it comes, right? No doubt about it. Very, vilely, very, very highly Sahih, authentic chain for this very hadith. From Hukyama, daughter of Umayma, from her mother. Umayma, who said, the Prophet, so the Prophet saying, Right, the Prophet had a wooden bowl. What is Muhammad doing? Guys, this is Muhammad, right? This is a story about Muhammad. The Prophet had a wooden bowl, right? In which he used to what? What did Muhammad do? Muhammad used to urinate in the bowl, inside the bowl, right? Uh, okay, sorry guys, bowl. Sorry for the type of bowl. So Muhammad used to pee inside this bowl which was placed under his bed. So Muhammad peeing in a bowl and putting it under his bed. Okay, great. One night, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, one night, uh-oh, one night he searched for the bowl to pee again, but he did, not, he did not find it. So someone stole the bowl from underneath his bed. Yes, you heard it correctly. Someone, a thief in the night, stole the bowl, the Urine, <laughs> the urine bowl of Muhammad himself from underneath the bed of Muhammad. A lot of thieves, you need to watch out, man. People come in to steal even the pee bowl of the Prophet of Islam. Wow. 
okay, and ask for it. So Muhammad is asking for his urine bowl. He needs his urine bowl to pee, man, to do the call of nature. Where is my bowl, brada? A brother speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira. Muhammad saying, saying, where is my bowl, bowl, Jibreel, Jibreel. Jibreel squeezing Muhammad, like a grape. Where is your bowl, bowl, bowl? Where is my bowl, brother? The members of the house replied, Barra, which was a slave girl of Muhammad, of Um Salama, drank it. Oh, oh, what, what, what? Muhammad was peeing in his pee bowl and the slave girl of Um Salama drank it? Barra had come with Um Salama from Habasha with her. The Prophet replied, look, uh, look what Muhammad is going to, re to say about it, about the whole incident. A slave, a slave girl drinking the urine of the Prophet. Now look at the re response of the Prophet of Islam. Muhammad replied, surely the slave girl, she, the slave girl, when she drink it, Surely she has protected him, herself from the fire with the great wall. Wow, wow, wow. Now I understand, guys. Now I understand why Muhammad Hijab is asking for golden showers. Uh -huh. Islam is all about drinking pee. They love golden showers, man. The Sahaba did it. The people who knew Muhammad face to face used to drink the urine of Muhammad. So if you drink the urine of Muhammad, according to the Prophet, you will be protected from the hellfire with a great wall around you. Hellfire itself will not reach you because you just drink the pee from the bowl of Muhammad. She drank from it, man. Yemeni Falcon, Yemeni Falcon, you are saying yawn. Would you drink the urine of your prophet if your prophet would be alive today? If Muhammad would pee in his bowl. I mean, you Muslims drink camel urine. I'm sure, everybody here is sure, all of you Muhammadis are going to drink the urine of Muhammad. I mean, uh, if you can drink camel urine, you will drink the urine of Muhammad. Look, this is camel urine. Drink it, brother, drink it. Oh, brother. Camel urine, brother? Yes, brother. What? Imagine if this is the pee of Muhammad. It's, it would be much more delicious, brother, with a lot of flavor and a bead. The Nabid flavor, right? Because Muhammad used to drink Nabid, which is wine. Uh, brother, imagine if this is the pee of Muhammad, the holy pee of the Prophet. Hellfire will not touch you, man, Muhammad said. So do, do you understand, guys, do you now understand why Muhammad Hijab is asking for golden showers? This is why, man. Anyone wants to recite the Shahada and become a Muslim after this? Anyone who is convinced after today's live show to become a Muslim, recite the Shahada because Muhammad was truly a prophet. Hellfire will not reach you. Hellfire will not touch you because you drank my urine, Muhammad said to the slave girl. Muhammad, the golden showers boy, hijab. This is why they love to talk about urine. This is why they are requesting for golden showers, brother. Muhammad Hijab, and I quote, saying, David Wood can give you a golden shower. Requesting for it. Hey, brother, these are Muslims, brother. Look. Imagine this is the pee of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Brother. I mean, hellfire will not touch you. If they drink camel urine, of course they're going to drink. The prophets here. Brother. Any Muslim? My Skype is open, brother. Any Muslim? Let me call this idiot. 
Hey, brother, sister, why are you not picking up the phone, brother? Connecting, brother? You called me, man. You're calling me a coward and whatnot. We are alive and you're not picking up the phone. You, It says even not, you know, connecting. So that means this guy is stealing Wi-Fi of the neighbors. Coward. I'm going to expose you, Rob Christian. Yeah. We are alive. There is no Muslim who dares to call us. You coward! Let, let me send him a message. Coward. Idiot. Idiot. I'm going to expose you, Rob Christian. I'm going to end your career. I found this article, guys, on islamqna.info. Highly respected Sunni Salafi website. Sunni Salafi website. And the Sheikh of this website, the PhD Al Azhari Sheikh, his name is Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Munajid. This is the fatwa number 12-18-23. Fatwa number 12-18-23. What is the question? So a Muslim is asking the Sheikh a question. Question. Guys, are you still with me? Do we have a call? Okay. Yes, hello? 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 Yes, hello. You're live on air? Oh, Rob Christian. That's me. Hello. Are you a Christian or a Muslim, my friend? Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm Christian. Okay. Please don't call me because I'm a middle in the teaching. I'm always saying call me when I'm done and we'll see if we're going to open the line. Please call me later, okay? Okay. Please, guys, you know the basic rules. Only Muslims can call for now, okay? Sorry for that. I'm not finished yet. Please don't waste my time, guys. My time is precious, you know, by now. I'm My situation won't allow me to stay very long uh, on, on my live shows. I have to use every second, every minute that I'm on, you know, to teach, to, to expose these evil son of Satan's, the prophet of Islam and the Muslim apologists, like this Muhammad golden showers boy, hijab. So, I saw this article, let us continue. Guys, please don't distract me. Guys, and I hope you are listening. I hope you are watching, I hope you are reading along with me. So the question of a Muslim to the, to the Sheikh, to Sheikh, what is his name? Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Munajid. The question is an atheist, so the Muslim is saying an atheist asked me, how could the messenger, peace be upon him, there's nothing called peace be upon him, it's Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah is praying on Muhammad, on Muhammad, not for, not to, Allah is praying on Muhammad. When Allah prays to who? Allah prays, Allahu Alam, Allah knows best. Okay. Allah prays, okay. So, how could the messenger, the question is, how could the messenger speak obscene words? So how could the messenger of Allah, Muhammad, speak nasty words when he's a prophet? Such as, tell him to buy his father's penis. Did you catch it? The question to the Sheikh is, if Muhammad is a prophet and he's the prophet of God, he's the seal of all prophets, he's the final prophet, according to Islam. How can Muhammad use nasty, disgusting, filthy language like this? To He is saying to one of the Sahaba, if you are proud about the Jahiliya, go by the penis of your father. So Muhammad is even insulting his own Sahaba. Can you imagine? Imagine guys, you are standing in front of Muhammad and Muhammad is insulting your father. He's insulting you to go by the penis of your own father. Imagine if someone would say that, if someone would dare to say that in front of you, in your face. What would you do to him? At least give him a, a box in his, in, on his nose. Give him a black eye, right? Tell him to bite his father's penis. The male members. He's there using soft language here, but it's penis. And a proof of Abu Bakr. So even Abu Bakr, the father of Aisha herself, the first caliph saying, Suck the clitoris of Falat. Even though the Prophet Allah is praying on him for bait obscene speech. 
So Muhammad contradicted himself. Once he says, don't use full language, don't use disgusting, filthy, nasty language. But Muhammad himself not listening to his own sunnah. Right? What, what else is new? Why is Muhammad using obscene speech? Now let us see the answer of this sheikh. Let us see the answer of the sheikh. Let's see where. So here the sheikh, sheikh is going to answer. It's a long article, you know, you know, Muslims say a lot, but don't, you have to scroll all the way down to see finally the answer. So the sheikh is saying, sheikh, the sheikh, Muhammad Salah al Munajjid, the PhD sheikh, is going to answer from a hadith. It was narrated from Ubay ibn Kaab. Who's Ubay ibn Kaab, guys? Remember, uh, the, the standard narrative has holes in it, brother? Remember when Yasir Qadi mentioned Ubay ibn Kaab, who was struck in the chest by the Prophet? Muhammad hit him in the chest with a box, using him like a punching bag. Yeah, that obey, the same obey who was commanded to go to by Muhammad himself, go to four people. One of them was Ubay ibn Kaab, that Ubay ibn Kaab, highly, highly respected Sahabi, right? Go to one of the, go to those four, Ubay and Ibn Mas'ud, one, were one of the, four, two of the four. Ubay ibn Kaab, Ibn Mas'ud and the other two, that Ubay ibn Kaab. It was narrated from Ubay ibn Kaab that a man boasted in an ignorant manner, in an ignorant manner of his tribal lineage. So, Ubay ibn Kaab told him to buy his father's male member. And he did not use a metaphor. Did you catch it? Now let us see where Ubay ibn Kaab got it from. Where did Ubay Kaab got it from? The people looked askance at him. At who? At Ubay ibn Kaab. What are you saying, Ubay Kaab? Remember, the Prophet said, don't use foul language. So, Ubay Ibn Kaab said to the people, I can see what you are thinking. Why are you using filthy language, Ubay? The people are thinking. And I can only say this. Look, the response of Ubay Ibn Kaab. Guys, are you still with me? Please give me one. Look at the response of Ubay Ibn Kaab. The Messenger of Allah, Muhammad, the Prophet of Islam, Allah is praying on him, instructed us, if you hear, so Muhammad is now talking, if you hear someone, Muhammad is saying, if you hear someone boasting, being arrogant, boasting in an ignorant manner of his tribal lineage, so about al jahiliyyah before Islam, about the time before Islam, the pre-Islamic era, then tell him, tell that Sahabi to buy his father's penis, and do not use a metaphor. So who said it? Muhammad said it. So Ubay got it from him. Ubay ibn Kaab got it from Muhammad. So Muhammad is using this disgusting language. So what do you expect from people like Muhammad Hijab who are requesting golden showers? What do you expect from people like that? Hey brother! <laughs> Do not use a metaphor, keep drinking brother. And if someone is doing a, a lot of blah blah about al jahiliyyah then tell him to go buy the penis of his father brother. Because Muhammad said so. Hey brother, sister, why are you drinking the urine of the Prophet brother? Because brother, brother Muhammad said, surely if you're drinking my urine, hellfire will not touch you brother. Hey brother. Brother, keep drinking the urine, brother. Keep asking for golden shower, brother. Mimi hijab, brother. You're doing an amazing job. Clap, 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 brother. Alhamdulillah for Deen al haq Alhamdulillah for Islam, brother. Islam must be the true religion, brother. Deen al haq brother. The religion of truth, brother. I am convinced, guys. I am convinced. After I close my YouTube channel, uh, sorry, my uh, live show. <laughs> I'm going to recite my Shahada, but not in front of you, brother. We should not discuss this in public, brother. The standard narrative, brother, has holes in it, brother. In Hijab, brother. A Muslim is calling? Okay. Yes, hello, you're live on air. 
Hey. Yeah, it's uh, you know what it is, right, guys? Let me block this. Idiot. It's uh, ultimate uh, idiot. Yeah, the ultimate donkey uh, guy. I don't want to waste my time. My time is precious, guys. Is there any other real Muslim? Is, is Muhammad Hijab here asking for golden showers, brother? Ultimate uh, fart, yeah, that guy. A uh, waste of time. Any real Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call us? I I, uh, I know his voice, so that's why I immediately knew it's him. Stalker, man. Any real Muslim, please stand up. Any real Mohammedan who wants to tell us why the Sahaba used to drink the urine of the Prophet? And why are you a subscriber to Muhammad Golden Showers Boy Hijab? I blocked him. I blocked him, Matthew. I blocked him. Any real Muslim? Any real Muslim? No real Muslims? So now we understand, guys, why now we understand why Mimi Hijab is using filthy language. This is why Muhammad Hijab is telling telling and requesting golden showers yesterday. This is why he did it. This is why he was using filthy language. Like his prophet, right? The same prophet. I mean, if, if Muhammad is the pattern of conduct, if Muhammad is the best of example to follow, he is the best of creation. If your prophet is using filthy language, nasty, filthy language, because he's filthy, what do you think about filthy Muslims who follow their prophet using filthy language? Asking for golden showers, brother. Any Muslim? Any Muslim? <clears throat> Any Muslim who wants to call us live on air? Where are the Muslim heroes, man? You should go see my comment section. It's full of Muslims. But when we are live and we are challenging them to for a discussion, all the Muslims are hiding. We have only one guy, a stalker, who is not even a real Muslim. A Rashad Khalifa boy, they stabbed his master Rashad Khalifa in the 90s in his own mosque. They stabbed him in the heart because he said, I'm the last messenger, brother. They stabbed him because he called himself the last messenger. And he also said that parts of the Quran are about him and other parts of the Quran are fabricated. They are corrupted. So this is why they stabbed him. So is this guy a real Muslim now? Imagine if uh, ultimate uh, fart would, would go to Mecca and they will find out that he's a Rashad Khalifa. I think they will stab him on the streets of Mecca before he even reaches Mecca. Because remember, Najis people should not be allowed to come near Masjid al-Haram, which is in Mecca. Where the black house of Allah is, the I mean Satan. You will make it unclean, man, Mr. Ultimate uh, Shirk. I mean, if they stabbed your master, Rashad Khalifa, in the 90s, what about you? Any real Muslim who will uh, defend uh, his hero, Mr. Uh, Muhammad, golden shower boy, hijab, asking for golden showers yesterday any Muslim no Muslims okay guys the line is open for uh, Christians I can only take a couple of calls so if you want to call me as a Christian guys it must be a really important call okay if you want to share something about what happened yesterday or you want to you know make sure that it's going to benefit all of us please Christians, the line is open for you now too. Because our time is really precious. <clears throat> Baby is still asleep, so we have now time to take some calls, guys. We have time to take some calls. What is this? Brother, what is this, man? Someone made this? Muhammad golden shower hijab. Wow. Okay. You Christians, man. Hey, 
brother Aaron, welcome. Your life on air, brother. Hey, Rob. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, <laughs> thank you for coming back after a week. Of yeah, odd. I know. I, I, I hoped, I hoped that I could come back much sooner, but you know what happened, right? They tried to silence yeah. us, and Sharia YouTube put me on hold. Yeah, yeah they changed. They changed us. They changed us yeah. for uh, at least one week. You know, Sharia too. You know. Yeah, they're crazy. I mean, I wrote, yeah. I wrote my senator, I wrote my congressman, I, you know, everything. I yeah, mean, I it's, heard. It's, Thank it's, you for that. Did Did you get any response? Not yet. It mm. usually takes a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, I've written amazing, twice before. amazing. I mean, they know the problem. Mm. You know, mm. I mean, this this is supposed to be a platform. Okay, you can't sue them, <laughs> but yet they can do all this stuff. Yeah. and supposedly they are held accountable by Congress. Yeah. Supposedly, and, and remember, but, Aaron Staley, brother. The thing is, they m marked it as hate speech. I challenge any Muslim. I challenge any political correct in the individual, any liberal, any YouTube safety member team to show me where, in, in in which place, in which video, I am asking my audience or are myself hating Muslims. Yes, we hate Islam. Fine. Yes, we I hate know. the teaching of Islam. Yes, we expose false prophets, fake wannabe prophets like Muhammad. But show us, I challenge anyone to show us where Rob Christian is asking for hate or is teaching hate. Yeah, we don't want to see anything bad happen to him. We'd like where? to see him come yeah. out of Where what? and when and which video, right, Aaron, brother Aaron? Where right. and which video? That's right, not one, not mm -hmm. a single one. So now I do have a question. This leads into into my one question. I have a little bit of a theory here. A lot of these guys, they don't seem to know Arab Arabic. They claim to know Arabic. OK, mm -hmm. are they learning Arabic from the Quran? Based on the Quran, I, I don't I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I okay. mean, I mean, uh, how can you start to read uh, Arabic from the Quran? If you don't know Arabic yet, you need to go to the alphabet. You need to learn the alphabet. You need to know, learn how to uh, pronounce the, the letters. Then, when you know the basic Arabic, then you can go and learn the Arabic in the Quran because it's not really easy Arabic, right? That's what Muslims are right. It's very beautiful, very classical Arabic. So, yeah, if you, but it seems if, to me that they're learning Arabic, mm -hmm. the meanings of words. You know, not just, you know, the, the letters and everything. They're learning the meanings of words from the Quran. They're yeah. not learning it from study books. Yeah. Brother, look, we have here uh, uh, this guy. I think it's ultimate idiot. It's ultimate fart himself. Right. In the live mm -hmm. chat saying, he's saying, uh, and he's proud about it. He says, lol, the Quran is the source of Arabic. Okay, I will go no. with you. Yeah, Jason Alberno, I will, I will go with you. Mr. Uh, Ultimate Idiot, it's you, I know it's you. You see, according to this guy, let me uh, post again what he said. Jason Alberno says, Lol, the Quran is the source of Arabic. Okay, if you claim that the Quran is the source of Arabic, right? He's, he's making that claim, not us, right? Brother, you heard him, right? Or you, you see, mm -hmm. you're seeing what he's saying. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here are a couple of examples. Let me open them. Right? Where Allah himself, if, if, if the Quran is the source of Arabic, why Allah does not know the difference between masculine and feminine words? In one ayah, right, using a feminine word, form of word in the Arabic, al anami which is feminine, then using a masculine word, that's not possible. According to Arabic grammar rules, you cannot start with a feminine word and then addressing the same feminine word with a masculine word so That's allah right. allah making a mistake in this ayah right then correcting himself right somewhere else here using the correct feminine form of the word so here is using feminine here in this ayah same ayah using a masculine form later allah correcting himself using a feminine word so here he's using butunihi, then Allah correcting himself using butuniha in ayah 21. 
if I'm not mistaken, this is chapter 23, ayah 21. Here, Allah is saying it correctly, but here in chapter 16, chapter 16, An-Nahl, ayah 66, using feminine in combination with masculine. That's Arabically, grammatically speaking, Arabic grammatically speaking, incorrect. So if the Quran is the basic, basic, is the foundation, the basics of the Arabic language, then your Quran, your Allah, your Prophet does not know the difference between masculine and feminine forms of words. So we should ask Allah, if you are saying that it's Allah, we should ask Allah and His Prophet to go back and retake their Arabic exams because here we just gave Allah a huge big F. Allah failing His Arabic in the Quran. So can yeah, Allah so make such mistakes and later correct himself? You see, here Allah making a mistake in chapter six, uh, 16, ayah 66, and later in chapter tw uh, 23, ayah 21, chapter 23, ayah 21, correcting himself. You see? It? Yeah. No. Here using feminine, you see? It's feminine here, al-an'ami, using an, a, for the second time a feminine form again. Here Allah is correcting himself. Right. And, you know, I'm getting ready to, to, you know, actually get started into this so I can, I can really study a lot yeah. better. Brother Aaron, sorry, the, sorry, uh, just a second. So we just explain, mm -hmm. we just explain to, to this donkey, this Jason L. Borno, and I'm not trying to insult any real donkey. Sorry to the real donkeys. We're not trying to insult you. He says the Quran is the foundation of Arabic. Your rules of the 21st century is not an authority over history. Idiot, listen, I'm not using the, the, the rules of today. <laughs> I'm using the foundation that you call the Quran against itself. I am using the Quran against itself from a different ayah. Look, there's something must up with you. Truly, truly, I tell you, oh my lovely audience, Islam truly does eat brain cells. And that's the conclusion that we can take because these people exactly. aren't here for the truth man yeah no no uh, they the reason that they tell them hey the, the best way to learn arabic is by using the quran is because they want to indoctrinate you but the quran isn't even written right mm -hmm. and so you know you have to stay away from that if you're a new um if you're new to learning arabic you're just starting to study like i am then you need to stay away from the quran because it's gotten a whole mess of errors in it it is not the basis for the arabic the arabic language came from the nabataeans yeah it came directly out of exactly, that exactly yeah and it, and it borrowed all kinds of words from uh, you know not just the greek but also from the hebrew and the aramaic it, it borrowed words from from uh uh, the Indian cultures, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the Quran needs to be avoided when you're, when you're actually trying to learn Arabic. Exactly. I mean, uh, we've, we've talked about this many times. The, the Quran stealing foreign words from other languages like Persian, right? Sundus, for example, and, and, and Persian word used in the Arabic. What is a Persian word doing in the, in the Quran of Allah? which is right. so-called the perfect Arabic Quran, right? Perfect explained right. book mm -hmm. of Allah, perfect Arabic Quran. What is the word Injil, which is the gospel in Arabic? Injil mm -hmm. is a Greek word. It's a Greek word. What is it doing inside an Arabic perfect Quran? Muslims. You That's right. Think, you need to think. Clearly, Muhammad was stealing words from here and there, putting it in the Quran, in his man-made Quran. Great. Hey, Rob, I wonderful to have you back i don't thank want to take friend. up a whole lot of your time god thank bless you and your family I'm still thanking the lord for your son uh you have a wonderful day sir thank you thank you for calling and god bless you keep calling us uh my friend thank you oh we love everybody love the and, moderators too bye and th and thank you for your uh action that you did for me my friend god bless you thank you so much oh yeah every month <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you god bless you my okay friend. You see you bye-bye Bye-bye. Uh, just a second, guys. I was I was showing it to you. I mean, you Christians, man. Look, someone made this specially for Muhammad, the golden shower hijab, brother. Uh, I mean, come on. Look, man. I mean, I understand. After yesterday's request, Muhammad hijab requesting for golden showers. 
I understand that Christians are becoming uh, very creative, right? For the sake of Muhammad Hijab, brother. Uh, the golden shower. Beautiful. I mean, the one who made this, you should ask money, man. Don't do it for free, man. Come on. Uh, Muhammad Hijab must be proud. I mean, if they are drinking uh, camel urine, and they are drinking, the Sahaba used to drink the camel, uh, sorry, the urine of the Prophet. I mean, uh, the Prophet is in front of me. This is urine, brother. Highly blessed urine, brother. Sunnah, brother. Oh, brother. It's Sunnah, brother. It's tradition of Muhammad, brother. Hey, brother. Golden showers, brother. Keep drinking, brother. Keep. Because Muhammad said so. You will be blessed, brother. Uh, brother, huh? Why are you drinking urine, brother? You don't know urine is really bad for your health, brother? You don't know that, brother? Why are you drinking urine, brother? Oh, because Muhammad said so, brother. Yeah, he's the first. Yeah, he's smelling it. Smell it, smell it. I drink it. Lick it, brother. Keep licking it. Brother! Oh, okay. Yes, hello? You're live on air? Hello, brother. Yes, hello, you're live on air. Go ahead. Yeah, um, just a few contributions on, uh, on the topic. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm really astonished that you can show somebody two verses from the Quran where Allah is correcting himself grammatically. Yes, and Allah, yet, Allah is doing it, this, exactly. Yeah. I mean, and yet this person would, would go ahead and, uh, and, and say the Quran is the... Is the epic of, of, of grammar yes I mean exactly if, if the Quran really? is yeah exactly and you you you, you saw we, we mentioned this Jason idiot right he's even using haram yeah. names Jason born idiot he's, he's saying that the Quran the foundation of the Arabic language is the Quran but wait how can Allah make mistakes and later correcting himself this is just one example there are nine hundreds guys quote what I'm saying there are 900 grammatical mistakes in the Quran. Around 900 grammatical mistakes like these. I'm not talking about spelling mistakes, wow. guys. I'm talking about grammatical mistakes like these. Allah make a mistake in chapter 16, ayah 66. Later correcting himself in chapter 23, ayah 21. Chapter 23, ayah 21. Here, Allah making a mistake in chapter 16, ayah 66, using al anami feminine word, using it together with masculine word, butuni. Later, Allah says, oh, oh, I made a mistake. I cannot abrogate it. So let me correct myself later in chapter 23, ayah 21, and using the correct form, because here he's using a feminine, al anami the kettle, and al ami kettle, is a feminine word, using butuniha, which is a again a feminine word so feminine, feminine noun using another feminine word for it right so their bellies yeah. their bellies and the kettle so the kettle guys is a feminine word and their bellies should be also feminine but here yeah. chapter 16 ayah 66 allah is using a masculine form of the word uh oh do you see it guys? If, if the Quran is yeah. the basic, if the Quran is the foundation, then Allah, Allah cannot be God because Allah is making mistakes in his so-called perfect Quran. Yeah, brother, I have a few questions for you. Uh, the, uh, we know now that there are other versions of the Arabic Quran apart from the Hafs. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the This Wars, is Hafs, this is Hafs. Uh, My friend, this is pure Hafs. This is not another version, yeah. this is house. Okay, just to be sure. Yeah. I know, I know, I, I know. So my question is, uh, do these others, I know, we know that now they are available, but are they available like online? Is there an English uh, translation of the words, for example? Uh, ooh, I have no idea. Something? I have no idea. You, you know, me, myself, I don't really need any translation, right? Because I'm an Arabic speaker. But... Yeah. I, I know, I, I, I know there's, there's a website and I can give people the website, they can compare, let me look for it just a second, they can compare yeah. the, <clears throat> the many versions, the Wersh, Qalun, the Hafs, with one another, right? 
you can compare yeah, but yeah. i i don't know if it's in english let's see if i can find it guys uh let's see just a second uh ba, ba, ba. i have so many sources that i need to okay i think i found it okay here i can put it also on the screen can you see the screen brother can you see the screen uh, I'll, I'll i'll check on it later I, yeah you can find it in the in the live chat yeah you can find yeah, it in the yeah. live chat and uh, uh, I'm sure one of our admins will also put it in the comment section after we are done with the live show. So yeah. here, this is for example, uh, Surah 9, Ayah 66. So here you can compare Hafs, this is Hafs, Hafs and Asim. You can compare the Ayahs on this website with, for example, Qalun. This is the Qalun version, An-Nafi. So this is Qalun. And this is the Hafs recitation. This is Hafs version. This is Qalun version. And if we scroll down, we see also Warsh and Nafi. So you, you find many, and I just, let me put it again. And let me, and while we are, while we edit, let, let us show a, a, a difference in the, in the recitation. Well, we are here anyway, right? We're already discussing it. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can find one. Let's see. I think this is a good one. Okay. This is halves. That, look, guys. This is halves. You see it? Halves. For the people who can read Arabic, this is halves and awesome. All right? Halves. Yes, halves. If you read the ayah, it says it's talking about the books. What could to be he? What could to be he? The books of Allah. If we scroll down, we go to the Qalun. Guys, I hope you are paying attention, please. So the Hafs version says, وَكُتُبِهِ The books of Allah, i.e. the Quran, the Torah, the Zabur, the Psalms, right? All the books of Allah. If we go to the Qalun, same chapter, same ayah, chapter 66, ayah 12. Let me give you the link, guys. Let me give you the link for the people who are interested. If we compare the same ayah from... Qalun this time versus the uh, house it says wa kitabihi so books half says Allah's books right mm -hmm. books with an s the Qalun version says Allah's book which book Allahu alam. So here we have not only difference in, in meaning in the ayah, we have also differences in the doctrine. Differences in the doctrine. Which book is Allah talking about? It says here, again, in the Hafs, it says, wa kut, wa And in the Qalun, it says, wa kitabihi. Also the Warsh, now the Warsh. Watch, this is Warsh. Same chapter, same ayah, chapter 66, ayah 12. It says, wa kitabihi, wa kitabihi. So the Qalun and the Warsh versus the Hafs do not agree. Here we find differences in meaning and differences in doctrine. Books versus book. Books versus books. So you see, Muslims, yeah. actually Muslims, much later started to play with the Quran. And they come with the excuses. You know what? There are seven ahrufs, brother. Yeah. Seven ahrufs. <laughs> Not one dot has been changed, brother. Not one letter has been removed, brother. <laughs> Lot of mercy. Lot of mercy. Now, Rob, uh, yeah. the other question is, uh, on these versions of the Quran, yeah. is there one that has more verses or lesser verses like we know the Afs has 6236 verses mm -hmm. how about the Kalun and the Warsh and all that uh i that to be honest i don't think so right i don't think so because uh today's quran they all have 114 chapters but remember remember the Sahaba who Muhammad told the Muslims to go to, people like Ibn Mas'ud, mm -hmm. Ubay Ibn Kaab, two of them. The number one guy, Ibn Mas'ud, had 111 chapters. What? 111 chapters. He did remove, he removed, or he did not include three. Ubay yeah. had 116 chapters. 
He included two mm -hmm. chapters more. For example, guys, Ibn Mas'ud himself, the Ibn Mas'ud, the number one guy to go to according to Muhammad. He removed Al-Fatiha, this one, chapter Al-Fatiha, he removed it, and he also removed, he did not include in his Mus'haf, chapter 113, yeah. this and one, Nas, uh, and 114, uh, and, yeah, yeah. and the last one, and Nas, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> the number one guy did not agree, and you know what he said about uh, the, Qur the Quran of Uthman? Because he said, remember, he, said, he, he called he it said, a deceit, deception. He called it deception. And he said, uh, uh, Uthman, I mean, Thabit, the, the young man that that collected. He called him a deceiver. Uh, yeah, he he said he, yeah. he, he was still in the loins of a kafir yes. when he was collecting about 70 chapters directly yes. from the Prophet. Yeah. The, the, the boy was not even born. Yes. And remember, Ibn Mas'ud was really smart. Why? Because if we study... For example, chapter 1. Let us go to Al-Fatiha, which Ibn Mas'ud did not include in his Mus'haf. Why? Because if you read it, <laughs> it sounds as if Allah is asking another Allah to be guided, mm -hmm. for example. Chapter 1, mm -hmm. Ayah 6. Allah is saying, because remember, when we ask Muslims, Muslims, the Quran is the speech of who? Muslims all agree, they say it's the speech of Allah. Fine, we will go with you. I hope you are listening, guys. Give yeah. me one. Chapter 1, Ayah 6, if it's the speech of Allah, to who is Allah saying? Please guide us on the straight path. Allah is saying, Allah is asking another Allah, another God to guide him to the straight path. Is that what you're trying to say, Muslims? Muslims, some Muslims say, no, it, it means say, okay, I will give you a thousand dollar if the chapter starts with the word, Qul, or, or say. Where is the word qul, or say, in the English? Where is it? It's nowhere to be found. So, Ibn Mas'ud was actually smart. This is why he did not include Al-Fatiha, because according to him, it was a prayer. It should not be in the Quran, and he called this Quran a deceit, because remember, if Muslims claim this is the Quran of Uthman, then... <laughs> There's a disaster, and also 113, same story, prayer, and 114. So, Ibn Mas'ud, the number one guy who Muhammad commanded all Muslims to go to, regarding the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, did not include chapter 1, he did not include chapter 113, and he did not include chapter 114. My, my final question for you, Rob, uh, for today. Yes. Yes, the, uh, the Prophet recommended the four men, uh, Ibn Masud, Kab, and the other guy, and the other two. And the other two, yeah. Now, Salim yes. uh, and, and the other guy, yeah. Now, when Abu Bakari was, was doing his first collection uh, that was kept under the wife of the Prophet, and even Uthman, when he was doing, when he had the committee, yeah. why did he not include these four? If they were still living, exactly. and if That's, they were the authority that, exactly. you know, that the prophet guys recommended. Did, yeah, exactly. Guys, this, this gentleman here is very smart, and he's asking the one million dollar question. Muhammad told the Sahaba to go to four. One, the, he started with Ibn Mas'ud, and he also mentioned Ubay ibn Kaab. Why did Uthman not command Ubay and Ibn Mas'ud to collect the Quran and compile it? Why did he command Zayd ibn Thabit, who was far too young, according to Ibn Mas'ud, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, right? Who memorized the mm -hmm. Quran when, when this guy was a kid. Was not, he was not even born yet, right? Yeah. Why did he not go to them? And on top of that, you know what happened to Ibn Mas'ud? People actually broke his, uh, his hip. They wanted to kill him, actually. Mm. Because he called the Quran of Uthman a deceit, deception, and he flee. He even flee because he didn't want to hand over his Mus'haf, his Quranic Mus'haf, to be burned because Uthman was having a Quranic barbecue. I mean, Uthman, Uthman was really a gangster. I mean, if, yes. if, if there was a person that really Muslims should condemn is Uthman. Yes. No wonder they killed him because yeah, they killed see, him. Yeah. If, they killed him. <laughs> yeah, they killed if, him. They got if the Prophet allowed seven modes, seven arufs, yeah. who is Uthman 
to only ban everything and say we are only going to remain with the Qurayshi dialect. Is he, is he more than the Prophet? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Muhammad himself I'm, never ordered anyone to compile or collect the Quran. So why, if, why are you, who gave you authority, Mr. Uthman, who gave you authority to burn original Qurans and I mean, make even one if, Rob, even, 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 even if we were to agree with, with the rest and mm -hmm. say, say the prophet allowed seven, seven different mm -hmm. readings. Mm -hmm. So who is Uthman to yes. burn the rest of the six and only remain with, because he said, he told them write down and if you define anything yes. write it in the Qureshi dialect yes. I mean it doesn't really make sense to me um, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to copy because it was already written down in the days of, Uth of Abu Bakr yes so why another committee why why differ when it they actually supposed to copy paste exactly yeah no. All right, God bless you, brother. I mean, my friend, uh, I've been me. asking these questions for the last yeah. 15 years that I'm doing this. No answer. No answer. The only answer uh, we get from Yasser Qadi, the likes of Yasser Qadi, who Muhammad Hijab, the golden show boy, <laughs> single handedly ended his career. All right. He mm. ended his career. Muslims start to hate and curse Yasser Qadi because of Muhammad Hijab, right? Helping yeah. us, right? He's, he's doing our job. He's ending careers of his fellow Muslim brothers. <laughs> well, well, the standard brother, narrative we... has holes in it, brother. <laughs> uh, brother, why is the standard narrative has holes in it? Brother, we should not discuss this in public, brother. Public. These people are idiots, man. <laughs> Don't do it, man. Don't talk in public about these difficult questions, brother. Yeah. Well, brother, my, my name is uh, Brother Chaka, um, coming from East Africa. Well, I, with your permission, I mean, I, I would really love to put your works in, in Swahili. Sure, it's your, uh, my videos are yours, my friend. They, our videos you. are yours, as long as you don't ask money for it. We are giving it for free, we are doing this yeah. for free. Don't yeah. you uh, get money from it, guys. Because if we are spreading the truth, the truth should be free. Thank you, my friend. Please download our videos, but, spread them. These are your videos. Hey. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for, Thank you for you. calling. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you for calling. Bye. Bye. Is Muhammad Hijab here? Muhammad Hijab, the golden boy. Muhammad Hijab, brother. Where is Muhammad Hijab? We need him, man. I mean, yesterday he uh, was showing us that he, you know, he loved golden showers, and he was requesting golden showers. So, guys, um, like I said again. Our videos, they are yours. If you like our videos, if you want to sh use them to benefit, because only the truth and only the truth matters, use them, download our videos, cut parts, because I understand maybe they are long. You can cut parts out and re-upload them, use them to show everybody that Islam is a filthy, disgusting religion. Let's see. Yes, you are live on air. Hello? Hello, you're live on air? Hey, Rob. Uh, <clears throat> this is Vedic. Uh, Hello. So, uh, Hello. yeah, I have a question on uh, the nature of uh, Allah. So Sorry, in, about what? Can, can on the nature of Allah. Nature of <clears throat> so Allah. On Tawheed. Okay. On Tawheed. Yes. So, on Surah 1, uh, cha Surah chapter, chapter 1. Uh, just a second, my friend. Just a second. You, uh, are you that uh, Hindu brother? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, it's you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so it is, this is okay. about Tawheed, chapter 112, Ayat, uh, about 112, uh, yes. Surat yes. al-Ikhlas. Yeah. Yes. What's yes. your question? You, you should, you should, rem yeah. uh, you should re uh, remember it by heart. Uh, yeah. So it talks about Tell Ahad. Who Allah who Ahad. <laughs> yeah, that is the heart of Islam. Yeah. Yeah. So he, ta he talks about, even Christian prince about talks about it. So he yes. talks about Allah is Ahad. So he doesn't talk what is Allah, it is one of what. So we, yeah, we got what, a chance guys, to hear for the, Yeah, the people who do not know, and this is really a very important question. Thank you for this very question, my friend. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad is one of the most important ayahs of the Quran, right? Muslims, they love to tell you about Surah Al-Ikhlas. It's one of the most important chapters, one of the, of the most important ayahs. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Okay, question. When Allah is saying, say, Allah, He is 
One of. This is a false translation. Where's the word wahid here? Because remember, let me let me basically use the numbers, guys. Wahid. Nain talata. One, two, three. Wahid. Wahid is in Arabic one. Not ahad. Ahad, if you use it like this, it means one of. Allah, one of what? Allah, one of what? Say, O oh Allah, you are one of. Continue. Why are you Allah? Who did did the cat bit your tongue? Did you bit your tongue? Allah not finishing the sentence. One of what? One of the donkeys? Muslims, is Allah one of the donkeys? Is Allah one of the many gods? I understand because there were more than 300 idols inside the Kaaba. Are you saying that Allah was one of them before Islam? Allah is one of what? He is one of uh, the gods like his daughters, Allah al Uzza wal Manat, the daughters of Allah that the pagans of Quraysh used to worship. They used, you know, they had these bird idols who used to intercede for the Quraysh because when they used to pray to Allah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ the pagans of Quraysh, they were actually not really pagans. We call them pagans. Muslims love to call them pagans. But they were not really pagans. Why? Because they used to practice Tawheed, unification. Remember, guys, Tawheed means unification. That's what Tawheed means. Let me give you an example. Ana awahid. I am unifying. Ana awahid. Did you catch it? The verb. I am unifying. So Allah, Allah, are you saying that you are unified with other gods? Allah huwa Allah, Allah, qul huwa Allah ahad al-aliha. He is one of the many gods. Is that what you're saying, Allah? Do you see the, do you see the disaster? Why did Allah not say, qul huwa Allah wahid? Why didn't he say wahid? No answer. No and remember, this is one of the most important chapters, right? Go ahead, my friend. So, so what about uh, chapter uh, Surah Bakra, Surah Bakra 163 to 163? It says your God is one God. I think it means uh, it, it talks about Wahid. Allah is Wahid. To Which chapter one? 2, 163. Chapter 2. So I don't know the Arabic if, if, translation, but yeah, in English it says your God is one God. Yeah, but if that's true, if if it's true what you're saying, that means we have a contradiction. So, so this is Wahid. So in is Arabic it is Wahid, right? Out here written. Yeah, that one means God we have a if, if it's true what you're saying, then we, we have a contradiction, right? If that's exactly, true. exactly. Let me go there. Which which I you said one three six? Chapter two, one sixty three. Oh, one sixty three. Okay, let me go there. Okay. Let's 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 play the recitation. Okay, it says in your your ilah, right? Your ilah, your God is one God. Here, he's basically correcting himself, right? He's basically correcting himself because in the last ayah, he's saying I ahad. am ahad, right? And here it is wahid. And here it's wahid. So Muslims, which exactly. one is correct? Which one is correct? Here we have a contradiction. Allah in the last one is saying, I am one of. One of what? Should be gods, right? Because Allah claims to be God. So here it's one of many gods. And in the other sure. one, here he's saying he is one. And so, I give you one more. Word. So did Allah did Allah abrogate chapter 112? Muslims will say no. Allah did not abrogate chapter 112. Is still active. So we have a huge contradiction, Muslims. Please pick your cherished Muslims. Is Allah, is, is he say, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَد? Or should Allah say, إِلَهَكُمْ وَاحَد? Which one is correct? Allahu Alam. Contradiction. Bam! Pick your cherished Muslims. Please pick your cherished Muslims. And take this verse also, 29.46. It says, your God and our God is one. 29.46. Mm, 
so that, that is the problem uh, rob like what do we debate like we yeah, can debate uh, uh, a, we can debate a book which is consistent right yeah, if it sure, is like uh, contradictory uh, exactly. then i say something and you say something and both are correct yeah uh, which 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 i ch- so, chapter 29 29 46 46 okay Yeah, contradiction. If if that's true, what you're saying, then it's again it's so, contradiction. So, so Muslims are also saying the correct thing, but from their own interpretation. And when we find the other verses, we say the other thing, and that is why we don't have a consistent view, right? Yes. yes. They say we say ahad, they say wahid. So basically, Which Allah, yeah. Basically, Allah again saying wa ilaikum wahid. So your 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 God is one. Your God, you know, Allah is saying. But here we have another problem. And this is your yeah. Christian God. Yeah, but uh, the problem is here. The problem is here. Allah is saying, "Your Allah, your God is one. Your God is one." Right? Allah is saying, "Your God is one." Which God is I? T- I talking about yourself? You see. Anyway, we have anyway in any anyway we have a contradiction with chapter one hundred and twelve. And remember, Surah Al Ikhlas. Is the chapter that Muslims love to quote to to say, "Look, look, look! Here, Allah is claiming to be one." But wait, Allah is not saying He's one. He is saying, "I am one of." Say, Allah is one of. Allah is saying, "Say, Allah is one of." That's a contradiction. Allah did not say, "Say, Allah who wahid." That's the correct way. So here we have a disaster. Yeah, and then he has hundred ninety-nine names. Yeah. And then we not have in the Quran, Quran not which in the, is no, no, uncreated. No, no. No, Quran no. uncreated. Just, just a second, my friend. Yeah, go ahead. There are no ninety-nine names, guys. Pay attention to the people who just joined or do not know this. I challenge, I challenge any Muslim. I challenge Muhammad, golden shower boy, hijab. I challenge Ali Dawa. I challenge any Sheikh, any Ustaz, any Imam. Show me all the ninety-nine names in the Quran. If you can show me all the ninety-nine names in the Quran. I will give you a thousand dollar. Not all the ninety nine names are in the Quran. There are actually twenty six names missing. Yes, you heard it correctly. There are at least twenty six names missing. So how do Muslims claim that Allah has ninety nine names? If you want to go to the Hadith, that Hadith is daif. Remember, Muslims love to say to you, "We reject daif Hadith, brother." So. What are the nineteen names of Allah? Can we find them in the Quran? No. Are you saying Allah failed again to be to explain Himself in His so-called perfect explained Quran? Oh, oh, another contradiction. And what is the meaning? Say, what is the meaning of the name Allah? Is the Al here referring to one or the God? The, no, the God no. of Aramaic. It's a name. It's a name. Because remember, when we ask Muslims, what is the Arabic word for God? What is the Arabic word for God? This in Arabic, Allah. it's Ilah. 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 Yeah. So, if Allah claim, if, if the Muslims claim that Allah means the God, then His name should have been the Ilah, right? The Ilah. So, Al Ilah. That exactly. should be the correct name of Allah. But wait, His name is not uh, Al Ilah. His name is Al La. Allah. Allah. Al- So his name is the La. So his name is La. Did you catch it? The name of the Islamic God, the Moon Idol, is La. So when they are going to say it means the God, no, it does not mean the God because else his name should have been El Ila. Do you see how they play games with you? They because you don't know Arabic, they think they can play taqiyya games with you. They think I, you, they think they can use tawriya against you. Yeah. And in Surah Fatiha also, right? In the one we discussed today. In mm-hmm. Surah One Point Two, it says Alhamdulillah, right? It doesn't say Lilla. Yeah. La. Alhamdulillah. Ilah, right? Li. The La is the Moon God. Yeah. Look, Alhamd. Uh, all praise is to Li four or two La. Do you see it? Two, two Li. Guys, are you paying attention? Li La. Do you see it? Even here, two. La, do you see it? So the name of the Islamic God, the Moon God, is La, the highlighted part here. L- La. This is an L. La, La. Do you catch it? Li. This this small letter means two, two. So all praise is 
to La. Did you catch it? So this is the real name of, of the Islamic God. The La. The La. So here they removed the and it became La. To La. To La. And by the way, we showed today how Muhammad Hijab, when he when he came from that debate, he went to Africa, he went to Ghana, and he came back. He said, No, 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 no. I didn't mean to say Allah prays for not to. No, I meant to say Allah praises, but wait, you just created another disaster. You are trying to do damage control, but you are making it worse for Allah and His Prophet. Why? Because as you see, all hamd, all praise is for Allah and Allah alone, not for Muhammad. So if you're going to say, if Allah meant to say Allah praises the Prophet, that means Allah is committing shirk for the sake of Muhammad. Who is then the real God according to Muhammad Hijab in Islam? Muhammad, because Allah is giving praise to Muhammad. But no, according to chapter 1, ayah 2, all praise is to Allah and Allah alone. Allah does not share his praise with anyone. But Muhammad wanted to become equal. He took the name, the praised one. Because remember, the name Muhammad is not a real name. It's a divine title. So the praised one, when Muhammad called himself the praised one, Muhammad, he made himself equal with Allah. He became God of Islam. He loved to be praised. So, so two more questions. I have two short questions. So we spoke last time like Ibrahim Prophet uh, committed shrik. When yeah, just he, a second. Just a second. Yeah. Ismail, Ismail in the live chat. You are, you are calling me a joke. You said, what a joke. Rob Christian says, Ahad is not Wahid. Where did he learn Arabic? Okay, I challenge you to call me and, and teach me teach me my language. My Skype ID is the Europe Christian. I challenge you to call me after this gentleman. And yeah, I, I can love drop to have a dis discussion. If calling, I can drop yeah, off. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for calling, my friend. Let's see if this goes this Okay, let, yeah, yeah, I can ask later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling. God bless. So uh, so you're calling me a joke, Mr. Ishmael. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Call me live on air on Skype and let us have a discussion. I challenge you to teach me and show everybody that Rob Christian is a liar, a scam like your prophet. I, I challenge you, if you're going to call me, I promise you I'm going to embarrass your prophet live on air. Make sure to say inshallah 10 times before you call me. Do, do at least three times because Allah will not help you. Make sure to say inshallah brother. So Ishmael, I challenge you to call me live on air and show everybody that Rob Christian does not know Arabic. Deal? Any Muslim? Ishmael, yalla ya Ishmael. Allimni al-Arabiyya, yalla. Farjini arda ktafak. Wa allimni al-lugha al-Arabiyya. All right. No call. Blah, blah, blah. In text, you know, in, in the live chat, guys, Muslims are like. <laughs> but when it comes to calling us life on air to defend their fake prophet and his fabrication, i.e. the yellow pages of Muhammad, the Quran, they become kittens. Any Abdul? Uh, brother, golden showers, brother. In the meantime. Golden showers, brother. Anyone? Golden showers? A hey, brother, sister. Golden showers, brother. Muhammad Hijab said yesterday, live on air, in the live chat. David Wood, can you give a golden shower? Truly, truly, truly. Muhammad Hijab is not gay. Now we can take that conclusion, guys. Truly, Muhammad Hijab is not gay. <clears throat> I mean, if you are requesting golden showers from a man like uh, David Wood, brother David Wood, truly you're not a gay, right? We know what Muhammad told in the Sunnah, in, his, in the Hadith, right? What will happen 
to gay people, right? Muslims are allowed to take a gay person and throw him from a high building. Yes, you heard it correctly. So Muhammad Hijab, when you're asking from another man to give uh, golden showers, and your Muslim audience will see this, what will happen to you? <clears throat> if they are sincere Muslims. They will need to ask you, uh, uh, why are you asking from another man to give golden showers? What? Right? They should ask you, why are you asking from another man for golden showers? Mimi Hijab. Muslims love golden showers, man. They they drink, uh, they do it. Uh, look, look, urine. Drinking urine. Look at the music behind it. Beautiful. Brother, it's halal, brother. Camel urine, brother. Maybe it's the urine of Muhammad. Allahu alam, brother. Hellfire will not touch you, bro. Hellfire will not touch you. The prophets replied, because a slave girl drink his urine, right? She came to drink his urine. She stole the bowl and she drank it. And Muhammad's his response is, surely this lady, this girl, this slave girl, because she drank my urine, she will be protected from hellfire. Hellfire will not touch her because she drank my urine. Disgusting. Disgusting. Any Abdul, would, would any Muslim in 2020 do the same? Would you steal the bowl where Muhammad peed in, where he emptied his uh, hum, hum, uh, golden shower? He gave a golden shower in the bowl. And uh, are you going to drink it so that the hellfire will not touch you like uh, the slave girl Bara? Hmm? Are you going to do the same? Because Muhammad said, Surely you will not be touched by hellfire because you drank my urine. I'm sure you Muhammadis would, would drink it, right? I mean, if you can drink camel urine, surely you will drink the urine of your prophet. Right, Muslims? And they say, beer is haram. Astaghfirullah, brother. Don't drink wine. Don't drink beer. But... Camel urine, brother, and the urine of the Prophet, brother, it's halal, it's a blessing, brother. Hellfire will not touch you, brother, if you drink the urine of the Prophet. You drink? Okay, I'll kind of give you the link. Here's the link, brother. Use it, bookmark it, save it. Use it in your debates with Muslims, guys. Any Muslim? Can we take one call, guys? Any uh, golden shower? Uh, sorry, uh, any, any Muslim? Any Muslim? Any Muslim? Maybe a Muslim call, guys? Muslim call? Where's Ishmael? Where's this, this idiot Ishmael? Ishmael, where is Yeah, Ishmael. Uh, Zukmidi, Kimidi, thank you for the super chat. I saw it very late, sorry for that. But thank you for the super chat, Zukmidi, Kimidi. God bless you, God bless your loved ones. Thank you for your support for our ministry. Anyone? Oh, we have dear sister Vanessa. Hello, sister Vanessa. How are you? You're live on air. Fine. Hey, how I'm are fine, you? I'm fine, brother. Uh, mm. uh, yes, thank you for. I'm happy you came back. Yeah. I have a question, brother mm. Rob. Yes. You know, there is. Uh, uh, this one small sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you repeat? Clip. Because you're sounding I like a robot. Can you repeat? Can, can you repeat again what you said? Sorry. Hello, are you there? I found. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm here. Can you yeah, hear okay. me? Yes. Try again, sister. Maybe your connection or something. Try again. Okay. There is a small clip. There mm -hmm. is a, a small video clip mm -hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, a brother was like trying to translate one hadith mm -hmm. from uh, from Ar Ar Arabic into English, mm -hmm. and it's uh, supposed to be in Al Athaimi Al Haythami Mojama yeah. Al Z uh, Zawaid, Volume mm -hmm. Eight, mm -hmm. Page Two Sixty Three, mm -hmm. and uh, the translation is that uh, the person that reported this 
They mm-hmm. added, uh, the, uh, let me read it, what he said. The mm-hmm. added says that uh, Abdullah ibn Masood yeah. uh, said about the messenger of Allah that he went with the messenger of Allah to somewhere, mm-hmm. right, to a place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they got there, the messenger drew a line on the ground yes. around him that is around Abdullah ibn Masood. Yes. He then told him to stay inside that line and never co- and don't come out yes. because if he comes out, he will die. Right. <laughs> so. Um, Must be true uh, story. Yeah. Allah, yeah. Yes, Prophet of Allah went uh, a stone throw, and then he saw naked uh, black men approaching him. Mm-hmm. That is approaching the prophet of Allah, the messenger of Allah. Yeah. And the, he then said that they are, he, he did not see their private part. I'm sorry to say it, but that is what uh, the man translated. Mm-hmm. But they are long, that is, they are tall and with little flesh. So they began to ride on the messenger of Allah. Oh, yeah. And the That's messenger true. of Allah began to read on them. Yes. So yeah, they, what are they, they, yeah? Muslims will say, they, sister. Muslims will say those are angels. Why are naked angels? Why are na- guys? I'm uh, here's the one million dollar question. This is very Sahih Hadith. Why are naked angels riding the Prophet of Islam? Again, why are naked angels riding the Prophet of Islam? That's the one million dollar question. Again. Why are naked angels riding the Prophet of Islam? Allahu A'lam. Right? Muslims will say. Allahu A'lam. We don't know. That. And the guy, the guy said, that is Abdullah ibn Masood, mm-hmm. said that the, uh, that he was terrified, he was afraid. Yeah. And when the morning came, they left. That is the black, the black men left. Mm-hmm. And then the messenger of Allah said to him that it was very, it was very heavy on him. Of course. And it was pain from uh, the men that rode on him. Rode on who? On Muhammad, right? On, on, on Muhammad, the messenger yeah. of Allah himself. Mm-hmm. Yes, this reminds me of the oh, other I... story where Muhammad said, Ibn Ammi Fahataka Ardi, my cousin. Right, right. The son of my uncle raped me. What? Yes. The, the. I wanted to actually. Maybe we can use this again in a future live show because remember, we you Muslims want to try to silence us. You are flagging our videos. You try to silence us. We will come back harder, and we're going to destroy your prophet even more. Actually, sister, you are. I wanted to use this in my future live show. And here we see that Muhammad was actually a bisexual. And he's, he's confirming, and we're going to show the hadith also, uh, the hadith that you mentioned, where Muhammad is saying that naked men came to, what? They came to ride him. So here is the, let me first show, where Muhammad is confirming that his cousin, his cousin is raping him. My cousin raped me, Muhammad is saying. Meanwhile, Muhammad's own uncle, Abu Talib, only touched him. We find that Muhammad claimed that he was raped by his own cousin, Abu Sufyan. Did you, do you see it, guys? Let me make it bigger. Right? Raped by his own uncle, Ibn Harith bin Abdul Muttalib. And before presenting the evidence, let us examine the Arabic expression. Hataka Ardi. Min Hataka al Ard. Hataka Ardi. Hataka. Ardi coming from Hatakal Art, which means getting raped. Someone is raping you. Let us see how it will translate. Blah, blah. Okay, so you can you can look it up. This is from Sira and Nabawiya, Sira Ibn Hisham, the most early source that we can find in, in the Islamic sources. Right? And Muhammad is saying, I have nothing to do. So Muhammad did not want to see his cousin because someone is saying, Look, your cousin is uh, uh, came to see you. And Muhammad is replying, Muhammad answered, I have nothing to do with those. In regards to my cousin, he, what? Raped me. His cousin raped him? 
Muhammad was raped when he was a boy by his own cousin. Am Ibn Ammi fahataka ardi. Did you catch it guys? Even in the Arabic, you can go and see it. You can find it. And about the hadith that you mentioned, we can, let us see if we can. There are many, many, many bisexual stories and rape stories about Muhammad. Muhammad used to sleep naked in the bed of his uncle who raised him actually. Allahu alam what his uncle was doing to this poor orphan boy when he was eight years old, sleeping naked in the bed of his uncle. Let's see if we can go to that uh, hadith, guys, so we can show it on the screen. Uh, it was, yeah. it was, uh, it's in El, El, El Yamidi. El mm. El Yamidi brought it. Here, guys, look. And naked Imam people, Ahmed, na yeah. naked, naked it, people riding Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until sunrise. Do you see it? Naked people riding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the sunrise. Allah is praying on him while being... <clears throat> there are a group of people and then I found confirmed the following description of those people. Inshallah they are naked and I cannot see their genitals. So he could not see their genitals. Tall and thin. These people were tall and thin. Then Abdullah said they come and kept riding Rasulullah sallallahu and Rasulullah kept reading over them. Reading what? Maybe the Quran. Then uh, Muhammad can read? Yeah, Muhammad can read. Then Abdullah continued to say, them also came to me and rotated around me and stay in my way. So I was terrified from them. So I sat down until the first light of sunrise. So they kept riding Muhammad until sunrise. When they left, then Rasulullah came feeling heaviness. Why would Muhammad feel heavy? Because there were naked angels who were riding him. Is this a joke? No, this is... Yeah, I mean, if this is a joke, then the Islamic most trusted sources are a joke. This is this is the most trusted sources that we can find. Brother, you see? Right. Is, this, is this the same thing that I, I just mentioned? Because this, the other one, it says black men. And black this is Sahih, men. Sahih, Sahih, brother. Now the hadith continues and you find Muhammad trying to get out of that by saying that those naked people are angels. So these naked people who were riding him, riding ropes, uh, having white ropes, they were angels. So it's okay if they are angels and they are naked to ride the Prophet? This is why it was too heavy for him? Riding him all a night long? <clears throat> and this is... Hadith is Sahih al Isnad. No way out of this hadith, my dear Muslim friends. We, we, I would love to, you know, I will not share this link because I love to commit a, a, a live show, you know, use this for a, a live show to talk about the bisexual prophet of Islam. Uh, thank you, Z, for, uh, for the super chat. Go to you, sister. No, the, the, um, the hadith that other brother quoted. Hmm says uh, black men i'm not sure if it's, if it's the same uh, that we are tall, yeah I, th tall I think it's and it, have little flesh yeah they are thin they are thin and tall yes that's what this hadith is yes. saying i don't see if where it says that or it's talking about a black man but you know it's it, i'm sure it's reported in many uh, places in many books since it's sahih so since it, since it's sahih al isnat Authentic, right? It's authentic. The chain of narration is authentic. I, I'm, I'm sure it, it's mentioned in many. Here it's same hadith. Here it says same hadith was also mentioned in Al Turmuzi and other Islamic resources refer to the Arabic reference. So here you see also the references, right? So we're going to talk about this in a future live show, guys. So not more spoilers than that. No, it's not weak. It's Sahih. Stop saying it's weak. As it says. Shame on you, it's not weak, it's Sahih. All right, sister, what do you want to say more? That's it, that's it. Mm. I would actually be glad if you could look into that mm -hmm. and uh, teach us about it. Yes, we, we, will, we will, guys, I, I promise you, because actually I didn't want to uh, talk about Muhammad Hijab today and his golden showers, right, requesting for golden showers from different men, live on air, in the live chat. But... 
And you know, since he did it, we had to, you know, spend the live show today about him. But I promise you, Lord willing, in my live show or the live show, the next uh, after one, because we, we have many topics to talk about. I have a long list top of topics, but we will talk about the bisexual prophet of Islam. I promise you. Sure, sister. Why not? We'll show everybody uh, that Muhammad was a bisexual. You know, uh, brother CP. Mm -hmm. uh, wrote in his book Sex and Allah, and Allah. I've mm -hmm. not bought the books, I have to confess. Mm -hmm. And he said, he mentioned it that all the family members of uh, the Prophet of Islam were gays, homosexuals. Yeah, there are many, there were many gays. Actually, there are sources that they even say that Omar, Omar himself, Omar ibn al Khattab was a gay. He had, mm. you know, I don't want to, you know, go too into too much details but he had problems with his <clears throat> and he needed men to uh, to to heal him from the pain from behind mm. yeah so many mm. many you know abu talib was gay us he wanted muhammad to take off his clothes and sleep with him in one bed we will go we will talk about it in a future live show no problem it's going to be 18 plus god <laughs> will <laughs> thank you, brother. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for calling this sister. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. For yes. Bye -bye. Bye, bye bye. Yeah, bye. bye. Guys, um, <clears throat> I really need to wrap this up. I think we uh, <clears throat> we had an amazing live show. Thanks to the Lord. We exposed this golden shower boy, Mimi Hijab, yesterday. We played the video. If you missed it, guys, if you missed it, go and rewatch this live show. It will take around 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes for you to process this live show. You can also replay this live chat. You can find the links that we used in today's live show. Uh, and I'm sure the admins will also provide the links in the comment section, right? In the comment section under this video. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your donations. I know it's sometimes hard for me to come online Maybe Muslims will flag our videos. You know, my situation. Uh, we just, you know, had the gift from the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He did not forget about us. He gave us this awesome gift in the shape of a healthy baby boy. So my time is precious, but I always try to come live at least once a week to be with you. You are my family in Christ. God bless you all. God bless your loved ones. Thank you for being here. Without you, we cannot do this, guys. Share our videos, download them, they are yours. You don't need my permission. Download our videos, share them on social media. Maybe they are long videos, because remember this is a live show, but you can download the video, cut parts out, or maybe maybe do a compilation, right, of our teaching. You know, compile it, uh, compilation, and re-upload it on YouTube. Thank you for watching, guys. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Lord willing, we will see each other in a future live show. Please keep us in your prayers. Keep the admins in your prayers. Thank you for your support. I love you. Lord willing, we will see each other in a future live show. Jesus is Lord. Every knee will bow and proclaim that he is Lord. And Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. And the Muhammadans, they are following the teaching, the evil, disgusting teaching of Muhammad. God bless you all, and we will see each other, Lord willing. Again, God bless.